performances. Thank you SMA Muhammadiyah Satu Temanggung for the performance.
As we are about to begin today's tech talk on unlocking the secrets of game development, I would like to share that the objective of organizing this event is to offer a platform for our distinguished speakers to come together and share their valued experiences and knowledge in the field of game development. I would also like to welcome those who are watching online on YouTube, and we look forward to have a dynamic and insightful session covering the many aspects of the game development field, such as the current trends, latest technologies, programming principles, and programming techniques. Mm -hmm. First, to deliver the opening address and kick off today's event, I would like to invite the esteemed Managing Director and Chief Future Officer of BAC Education Group, Mr. Roger Singham. Good afternoon. Uh, just to say thanks to the students from Indonesia from the secondary school who were here, I think for a micro bit on music under Dr. Sharil, uh, for putting up the show and keeping you all entertained while people walk in at the normal Malaysian time. <laughs> Okay, we normally give ourselves a few minutes to arrive at an event. Uh, the reason I want to welcome all of you, uh, thanks so much for coming on an afternoon and a work day, so you don't have to go back to work uh, after this. And uh, the reason I'm delivering the opening address is because I'm the person who knows the least about game development. Uh, okay, I, I can't even play a uh, the FIFA, I, I try, and I normally we down about 12 0 with my children, at which point I just say I give up and let's go play something else outside. So, this is a fantastic industry. Its growth potential is phenomenal. You now have, I think, even three channels on, on cable on Astro, and uh, it's a huge industry with lots of potential. And I think the potential is just going to increase with virtual reality, uh, the new, you know, uh, Apple's, I mean, you've got the Oculus and you've got, but now with the new Vision Pro glasses and things coming out, I think it's going to be sky the, the limit. Uh, you will really soon be immersed in, in 3D, 4D, whatever realities playing these games. And hence, I think it's an area that uh, the younger generation who grew up with the earlier generations of these games, uh, should immerse yourself, should try to familiarize yourself. So I want to thank, today we've got some great panelists um, who are, you know, the experts in these areas from the large uh, companies. And uh, I think we're all blessed that you managed to get this group of people assembled. To be honest, when we first came up with the idea, uh, and there were seven, I think they were, the answers were, most of them were not coming. And then all of a sudden, everyone chose to say yes. So it was like first one yes, six no's, and two yes, it was five no's, and then all of a sudden, I think it was a Tiller called me and said, no, everybody wants to come now. Uh, we don't know what's happened, but I said, fine, just give everybody the time uh, to pay forward. So I think once they saw more and more coming in, and uh, what's encouraging is the number of you all who actually signed up and turned up for this. We will have a lot of products that we will roll out with some of the speakers and the vendors over the next few months. And I will ask you now, you know, generally here, that we will be sending you information on the various new programs that will be done, whether diploma, degree, uh, short courses. We will share it with you. Um, and, I mean, if you're looking at doing something, then come. You know, do feel free to sign up. This Saturday, so now here I'm pitching for something else I'm doing. This Saturday, uh, you see, I'm a firm believer in building competencies. 
that in order to stay relevant, we have to constantly build competencies. And the only way to build competencies is to acquire new skills. So on April 1st, we are launching a new product under our HRD Academy, an all access pass. Now what that does is basically you pay 1,800 ringgit, and you can attend 100 over courses. Uh, they are in the evenings, two hours. You could come here at the center or attend them online. And it covers everything from blockchain to cybersecurity to cloud to employment law to you know design, the whole range. And we also give you access to LinkedIn Learning and Coursera for an initial three months uh, because it's all bundled together. So not only do you get access to local trainers here, you also get access to LinkedIn. And all of this actually costs you, uh, if you go and check out the prices, it's a thousand eight for everything. I do want to democratize training. Currently people pay 2,000 ringgit for a day, a two day session costs 4,000, you know, 2,008, 4,000 for a four day session. What I wanted to do was give people a chance to attend and learn about everything. So whether you're looking at project management, design thinking, Two hour snap, you know, two hour snapshots by people who are experts in the industry. And then if you want to do a three day course or a four day course, it's up to you, but everything becomes a lot cheaper. So we are launching that this Saturday uh, in another hall we have up here, uh, our banquet hall. And uh, for those of you who would like to come in, please do join us. It's from 10 to 12. But the session starts off with the launch, talking about all the different types of skills, which Coursera, Udemy, LinkedIn, Forbes have identified as the skills that we need moving forward. And then I do a short session on fast track skill acquisition, which is basically a method, not my method, a method by others, but which I uh, will be sharing with you all nonetheless, um, which allows you to learn anything new fast track. So whether you want to speak a new language, whether you want to learn how to play the, uh, the guitar, whether you want to uh, uh, look at cooking, it is just a method of how you can actually pick anything up. So the session on Saturday is actually on fast track skill acquisition and the launch, and then from April 1st. So what it basically means is every evening, you will have something to attend, and whether on campus or at home, and it's 1,800, and we've also made arrangements so it can be HRDF you know, you could actually claim. Um, there's a method whereby you can actually claim so that if you, if you are sponsored, or you could actually pay out of pocket. But I really do think it's time for people to realize that everything is converging. All fields are converging. So you can't sort of say, well, I'm in IT, or I'm in medicine, or I'm, in, I'm an accountant. Everything is converging. And that whole idea is to try and get all that knowledge into one space for that ability to adapt. I always keep citing Darwin. It's not the strongest, nor the most intelligent of species that will survive, but the one most adaptable to change. And Toffler, uh, it's not those, you know, the literature of future will not be those who can't read or write, but those who can't learn, unlearn, and relearn. So I'm not saying that we should all learn everything, but we should learn those things that actually uh, will be of value to our chosen careers, our chosen, you know, life journey. Whatever. So for me, it's always been my focus is on one leadership, on strategy, on managing projects. You know, so those those key areas, marketing, branding, those are my key areas of focus. Uh, for someone else, it could be something different. And that's also the fun part. I like music. You know, so that's the other part of it. So I I, I want to welcome all of you all. This is going to be a great session. I also will apologize that I have to leave for another uh, session, but. This is the one thing that I've got the least knowledge of. And that's the reason why I said, can you do the opening? I say, yes, because you don't really have to know anything here. Uh, so you can pay attention after this. Uh, is, I'll give you my phone number nonetheless, because normally I'll put it up on the board. Uh, 017, 017 500 6778. 017 500 6778. Raja, R-A-J-A. -A. Uh, we do a lot of work in the social good space. Actually, during the pandemic, we helped about half a million people, and all of it leveraging technology. So for any of you all who want to look at things to do, you can always reach out. I mean, if you want to know like what to do about game development or what to do with my career, what how do I learn, or even to attend this Saturday session, just send me a message and I'll, I'll organize. Uh, Mr. Tilley, later I might get them to. Ah, OK, that's the QR code. 
for those who are looking at coming on Saturday, it's 10 to 12. Just register online. It's easy. They flash the QR code. So if you do that uh, on Saturday, but the thing that I'll be covering on Saturday is all the skills that we need moving forward, which have been identified for, for jobs, for career advancement, for businesses. And I will be teaching or be saying sharing this fast track skill acquisition. But you can use that to learn anything from cooking to you know whatever you want to learn. You can use the same technique. Uh, that's what I'm covering. Okay, so thanks so much and uh, have a great session. Thank you, Mr. Rajasingam, for the inspiring word. If you are interested to join our adaptive and upskilling community, feel free to visit our website. Without further ado, we would like to invite our first speaker, Mr. Yi Ivan, Head of Incubation at AMDEC and Community Manager at Games HQ. Hello. Hello. Sorry, let me put on the jacket more formal a bit. Yeah. I'm supposed to be from the government anyway. Okay. All right. Oh, he's here. Okay. So this is testing, huh? All right. It works. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'll I'll just start. All right. I'll jump straight in. Uh, first off, a uh, small little shout out to all the Republic Polytechnic students and lecturers that came over from Singapore as well, and also to all the uh, Timothy. Are you here? Oh, yes. My brother over there for inviting us and giving me this opportunity to come and speak to you all. All right. Uh, now, where do I aim this? Are you guys? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, just so I was invited here to give a little talk about uh, games art. I think we have some other experts to talk about programming and other development issues, right? So myself as a my my role is in I work in the government, right? But prior to this, I was also a developer. Right, I'm a game artist by trade, and now I'm in MDEC, uh, basically looking over the incubation efforts that we have. Lah. The government is providing incentives and benefits for people who want to start up businesses in this creative sector. Right. Oops. So what I'll be covering today, right? Uh, I'm also I was also a lecturer for about 13 years, so I like to summarize my points. All right. So we'll be covering uh, things, a topic with change. Right. Uh, where are we currently? Wait, hold, hold on, I'll give me a second. Sorry, I got new slides. I updated the slide. Oh, it's fine, okay, okay, fine, fine. I think it's fine. All right. Okay, so just to share a little bit about MDEC, right? Uh, basically, not many people know it, but uh, our government actually has a department that handles games, right? All right. Um, so we actually cover a lot of things. MDEC is uh, in charge of the digital economy, right? So we are in our responsibility to drive the digital economy for Malaysia. And we cover different different industries, for example, like uh, digital agriculture. I'm not sure you know we had that, all right? Uh, where they use drones to actually scan agricultural land and then give you feedback if something's going on, right? All the way to Islamic finance, right? And so happened, I found myself in the one department in MDEC that handles all the fun, nerdy stuff, which I like, right? So our department is basically digital content development, where we are in charge of... Uh, animation, comics IP, game development, uh, metaverse content, blockchain, uh, and web tree content, right? So our di division, where there's about maybe 20 plus of us, right? We are responsible for actually trying to grow this sector of the industry. All right, so this is one of the biggest things I think, uh, I myself, I'm a multimedia student back then, many years ago, right? Uh, and I think many of you might face this whenever you say, hey, mom and dad, I want to go study games. I want to do, I want to be a comic artist, I want to be an animator, right? The, being Asians, I think the first thing your parents will be like, oh no, I lost another one, you know? This guy's going to go on a creative path, 
right? Because we deviated from the the set rules that you know, engineer, doctor, you know, lawyer, the the the, the money making stuff, right? So we decided to go for a hard road, right? We wanted to be, uh, we want to create. Uh, stuff that we like to consume. That's my path. You know, so parents always wonder, you know, uh, you know this career, is there an opportunity there? So my job here today is to basically share with you why I feel that there's a lot of opportunity and why it's something to be considered. Right. So if, most importantly, I felt that uh, I want to share with that content consumption has changed. Uh, a lot of young faces behind there, but there are also some older ones. You will be more familiar with this, right? We have changed the way we consume content nowadays. So am I pressing or are you pressing? I'm not sure that I'm correct. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I thought I was pressing the wrong direction. Right. Okay, so uh, basically comics, even comics, you know, comics used to be printed on paper, remember? And, and then come little booklets. How many of you still read physical comics or even a book? I think numbers have like kind of declined a bit, right? Uh, even myself, I used to be an avid reader. I used to read uh, one short novel in maybe one sitting, one night. Right? But nowadays, I open one chapter, I fall asleep. Right? Because the way we consume content has become, our attention span has become drastically affected by social media, uh, admittedly. Right? So things like comics have changed to things like uh, web comics as well. Right? The, and interestingly, this little tidbit like manga is interestingly enough outselling American comics, even in America. Right? And uh, webtoons is a new place where artists can make money. Just to give you an example of what Webtoons is, it's a web comic platform where you can upload your comics, you get people to subscribe to you, right? They, they read for free, right? And if you have sub sufficient number of subscribers, uh, Webtoons actually engages you, they pay you some kind of like a, like a retainer fee. The retainer fee is anywhere from 2,000 USD onwards, right? So for most Malaysians, 2,000 USD is actually very nice because our currency is not doing very well, right? So on the bright side, if you convert that, it's actually a pretty good living here, right? Sorry. Even animation, 2D animation has drastically changed, right? If there's Snow White, uh, and of course, nowadays 2D animation is beautiful, right? Uh, even back then, Reboot, I don't, don't know anyone, 1994, some of you not born yet, right? So this is one of the early, earlier uh, 3D animated series that we used to wait every weekend. On Sunday, we wait for the cartoon. The ne ne next episode comes out next, uh, next Saturday, Sunday. Right? So we had to wait for one week, unlike Netflix now. Right? You, you, you can binge watch the whole series, series in one night. Right? So that has drastically changed everything that we do. Even games, right? Why exist so many game programs nowadays? It's because the demands for game development has gone up. Right. When I graduated from my multimedia program last time, I could model a 3D cup. Wow, very nice. Right. It looks real. It looks like glass. Right. I could get a job. Nowadays, there you're expected to model characters, environments, you know, and you have to do it at such a high level of requirement right, before the industry even considers bringing you in to intern. Right. So that's why the, 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 the expectation has changed. And why has expectation changed? Because consumers' expectation has changed. Nowadays, you guys see a triple A game, you're like, something don't look right, you're complain. You want, right? You don't, uh, the graphics here don't look as nice as this game or that game, right? Whereas actually, because of the increase in requirements, companies also have to step up their game. So it's a never ending thing. So therefore, students who are going into this field also have to uh, brush up your skills. All right, so uh, there's also the, the rise of OTT platforms and digital, digital distribution. These are ways that consumers can get direct to their market. Uh, we have some uh, di digital distribution with things like Steam. You guys familiar with Steam? GOG, stores like that, where developers can now put out games, right? And then we can actually start to self-publish them ourselves. Back then in the old days, right? Games had to be, um, you had to manufacture copies of it, right? Worry about the logistics of getting your game to the stores. And then you worry about people actually buying your game. If no one buys your game, then you basically sell your furniture and close shop, right? But nowadays you can actually sell your game to a large audience. You don't have to worry about the manufacturing more copies because everything is digital, right? In fact, the more copies you sell, Everything's all profit for you. you know? So that's the exciting part about it. You can go to a publisher now, or you can even self-publish. So that puts a lot of controls in the hands of the creator, right? Which previously, this did not exist, 
right? YouTube also changed the way animation is uh, seen. Now animators can actually produce content, put it up there, build a following, and then make a good good income from it, right? We even now change the way we consume content because why? Sometimes we don't play games. I don't really have much time in the day nowadays, full time job and all that, right? So instead of playing games, what we do, we watch people play games. Right? Some of these influencers, I don't know, I think it may be familiar. Some no longer, I'm not so updated anymore, lah, right? So some of this may no longer be around. Uh, I think this guy's toast on this, the right, I think it's a Malaysian as well, right? And then the rest you may be familiar with, lah, right? There's a lot more. These are all the influencers and streamers that are making a lot of money uh, currently streaming their content. All right, so now just to show, this is more for parents, uh, right? If you're wondering like, whether, is there a future for games industry? You know, is it growing? So this is just pure data uh, which we got from Statista, right? There are many, many data agencies out there with a lot of information, right? So as, as you can see, uh, sorry, I, I, I highlighted last year's one, 2023, right? We did pretty well worldwide, right? And next year, it's just projected to go up. Sounds like some MLM kind of uh, marketing scheme I'm, I'm showing you here, right? But it's just very positive because why? People are consuming content at an astronomical rate. Right? And as you can see through the colors, mobile games it actually makes up a huge chunk of the revenue across the board. Right? And these are some of the uh, top companies' revenues out there. These names should be familiar to any one of you who plays games, right? Activision Blizzard, Bandai Namco, EA, right? So interestingly enough, yep, so three of these companies also have branches in Malaysia, right? Uh, Bandai Namco, all nearby, coincidentally, right? So good if you study here, right? You're very nearby to all these top studios, right? So Bandai Namco is in Klana Jaya. You guys know where that is? EA is in Plaza Central and uh, Sony PlayStation is uptown, right? So there's all basically a 30 minute drive from here, right? And also we have all these, these are all the large studios in Malaysia itself. So uh, Larian Studios, PlayStation, Virtuous. Virtuous is one of the world's largest outsourcing studios. Passion Republic is a locally uh, homegrown company, about maybe about 200 plus people. We have a Bandai Namco, Lemon Sky is about 400 packs, right? Uh, EA Codemasters, uh, Double Eleven from the UK, Fly Studios, Glow Production, uh, Streamline Group, and uh, Pole to Win. There's, there's a few more, lah. but these are the studios which are maybe uh, more between maybe 400 to maybe about, about 60 to 400 people typically. So we consider them large for Malaysia standard, right? We also have a very vibrant um, indie scene. Lah. Right, these are the, the mid-tier, smaller-sized companies, right, which can comprise from maybe a few guys, five guys, or all the way to maybe like sixty people. Right, so there are many more, but these are some of the more prominent ones. Uh. In fact, Toda Studios, then one representative. Yeah, uh, right. So uh, these are some local IP. So IP, this is an interesting thing. IP is very powerful nowadays, right? In fact, you go to most conventions, everyone's speaking about it, right? So intellectual property. Because uh, Malaysia, we do a lot of outsourcing, but outsourcing doesn't put us in a very, uh, it's not, it makes money, it's very lucrative, right? But at the end of the day, every country will want to move up the, the chain, the hierarchy chain, where we want to produce our own stories, tell our own stories, make our own content, right? So Malaysia, we made some inroads. MDEC has been supporting some of these companies. We fund them, we bring them to market, we get them, uh, we bring them together with publishers and investors. And these are some of the actual uh, products that have been made, right? Gigabash, right? Eximia sees the front line, uh, Rhythm Doctor. Rhythm Doctor is interesting because it's an indie game made by maybe about a couple of guys, two, three guys, right? And I think the, they've made millions so far. All right. If you if you see the, the developer, don't, don't say I even said that, right? But it's, pretty, it's doing pretty well off now, right? Back and switch also. So these are some of the locally made titles. Right. Just do some of them, all right? So Giga Bash actually has a license with uh, the Godzilla IP as well. Let me try it. 
cabeça. Yeah. Eximus is a oh sorry. Oh, cool, thanks. This remaining time, right? Okay. <laughs> so Eximus is a uh, first person shooter game where you can play the soldier as well as our commander, right? On a higher level of strategic planning. Yeah. Give me one real engine. Right, so this Rhythm Doctor is a... There's only one button in this game, right? And the developer was actually not a game developer. He was an engineer. So he graduated uh, from, from studies, right, in UK. And that was Brexit. So he, he made a game instead. And a few years later, now it's, it's all set. Right, so there's one button, you press it whenever the tempo hits, right? And he has a huge following. So, Hundreds of thousands of copies. Yeah. Yeah, and this is a make and switch from Streamline Studios. Streamline does a lot of outsourcing work, right? Uh, but this is one of their own attempts at IT. Yeah. If you're familiar with Overcook, yeah, so it's something similar to that. Except you're catching the little buns that run around the screen. Alright. Okay. So Double Eleven is in Malaysia. These are some of the games that they, are, they work on, right? Now games are, how games are made now, this is, is a little bit different, right? They're not all made by one studio. Some games are huge. So parts of it are segmented and then sent to different countries to, to, to work on. In fact, Malaysia does a lot of its outsourcing works, right? So some of these games might be familiar to you. Of course, Larian Studios, some of you might be familiar. Larian, uh, their game, Baldur's Gate 3 won the Game of the Year award, right? Uh, but then Namco works on a lot of titles as well. Someone's like, someone excited, someone said, which, which game is it? Which, which, which game? Take it. Oh, okay. oh, all right. There's a huge uh, fighting game community in Malaysia, by the way. Yeah. Uh, this is Passion Republic. So Passion Republic works on a lot of titles as well. All right. Familiar? Should be, right? Unless you're all playing mobile games and then it's okay. All right. So, besides that, we also, in Malaysia, we also have a very rich, higher acceptance of uh, anime, games, and content nowadays. This is evidence in the fact that we have so many ACG events, right? Comic Festa has about, what, 75,000 people coming every year, right? And these are all the many, many different, different uh, activities. In fact, uh, even MDEC, we have our own uh, kind of like, like consumer content event, event in uh, September. This year, we're having it in September. It will be in KLCC, right? So that's where we want to showcase all the Malaysian content to the rest of the rakyat, the people, right? In order to know that, hey, we're actually making games in Malaysia and we have a lot of talent in Malaysia, right? There's, it's great that there's so many education institu institutions now as well. There are about 30 plus, right? And I'm, I put Unimai there, right? Because it's good to welcome more programs into the fold, right? So in terms, if you say that, where, where can I study games? These are other places, right? So we also have a lot of games on Steam. Uh, we, used, we had a sale, Steam sale last year, right? These are all the games made by Malaysians in Steam. And we started out pretty late. So our first game, Velocity Box, was in 2014. And then every year from there, maybe about three, four games a year, three, four games a year. So the upcoming, we have a few more titles on the right. So you can look out for that, right? Now, jobs. So some of you going to this program, if I'm not mistaken, it should be a little bit more technical, right? Because Unima is a more technical program, right? So, but in terms of like the art side of it, I, I, I do think you all have an art component as well, right? So anyone who is going into the games industry as an artist can consider these kind of jobs, right? And these are also skill sets that typically you're expected to know, right? Uh, graphic is, you have, in a sense, you have to know a little bit of graphic design because you're working in a visuals, visual medium, right? Yeah, illustration is something that's also very valuable. You can be an illustrator in the games industry. Concept artists also, matte painters, texture artists, 
uh, 2D game artist, 3D game artist, right? Uh, environment art, 3D, 2D animation, 3D animation, riggers, uh, technical artists, art directors. Of course, no one starts off as art director, right? Uh, UI, UX artist. So these are some of the common jobs that we might find if you do take the art path, right? And go into the game industry. But it's always good to have a goal. So uh, those of you who are thinking of starting this career, right? Uh, I would recommend just go find out what these this jobs entail. For example, you want to do 3D game modeling because you like 3D game modeling. You like seeing 3D games, right? Therefore, have that as a goal first, right? But then again, right, be okay to change it along the way, right? This, I think, is a very key thing. It's always good to have a target so that you don't want... You, you, as you craft, if you go through your studies, right, you don't wander around blindly, right? Have a destination. Be, I want to be a 3D game artist. Therefore, you work towards that, right? But if halfway through the way, you decide that, you know what? Actually, being an animator is more fun, or you prefer that. Be okay. It's okay to change to that direction, right? So I think some of you are in secondary school, going on to tertiary education. Some of you might be already in universities, right? Try to make this a point. Uh, have a, that destination that you want to reach first, right? Now, uh, these are some of the, I don't want to say all the good things about industry. I show you games making money, right? There's a lot of companies out there, a lot of jobs available, but there are also challenges to be aware of, right? Like, for example, industry volatility. The industry up goes up and down, right? Sometimes some companies lay off people. Sometimes uh, uh, bad things happen, right? But there's always opportunities in all these moments, right? Uh, I'll give you an example. So, for example, let's say a big company lays off, like, a couple hundreds of people all this talent right they don't just disappear into the the ether right they might some of them might actually form together new companies they start up their own stuff right and then they grow companies up again some of these small companies new companies might eventually grow to a big company and then the process goes around and around again right so it's like a like a game industry circle of life which i believe is the same for any other industry Right. So currently, sometimes if you see like there's a volatility in the market, oh, this company kind of laid off like 900 people. Okay, it's it's bad, right? But it's not totally a bad thing. It could be a good thing as well, right? Also, drop concentration. A lot of uh, in Malaysia, sorry, in Malaysia, yeah, in Malaysia we have a uh, oversaturation of companies in KL. Basically, our whole industry is more or less in KL area, right? Central Central Malaysia. Right, so MDEC, we are trying to encourage development in Penang, Johor, Sabah, Sarawak. Basically, north, south, and the eastern side of things. Right? So there are some initiatives where we are rolling out to encourage the industry growth there so that the, the, the recruitment stress is not fully on KL itself. Right? Even education, also, we are trying to encourage some universities to uh, generate more manpower there so studios can consider moving to those uh, different parts of Malaysia. Right. So uh, competitive pay, uh, I'm happy to say that in Malaysia, um, game developers actually get paid a little bit better than, um, let's say, sometimes, even some of the graphic designers. Come, I'm, I used to be a graphic designer. So <laughs> I, can, I can say, up to today, if you go on Facebook, you check out the average rates, some people are still paying pretty low. Right? But in, uh, let's say a game artist in Malaysia, typically you can earn somewhere from maybe about 2005 to maybe 3000 as a fresh graduate, depending on which studio you enter. And then it scales up from there. Typical, uh, you got to go in and prove yourself, and then that's where your rewards come in, uh, right? Uh, so, being in the game industry, of course, you get higher pay, but also the requirements are much higher. They expect you to be of a better caliber, right? You can't just go there and say, oh, I can, I can do a cup like what I did last time, right? Now you got to do everything. You, you got to know everything, right? And be good at certain things, right? That's where you have much more value as an employee, right? And of course, uh, the challenges is constant innovation. I think anyone, especially lecturers, the difficult thing is on one hand, you're trying to teach, you know, and then, but the, the, the ground is shifting constantly. There's new tech coming in, there's new stuff you want to try, but there's no time to try it, you know, and then everything's kicks on. It becomes a race, right, to teach the most current things. Even as a developer itself, if you're full-time in the industry, some you'll be, you'll be working with cutting-edge technology. But sometimes there's just too many things coming in, right? So how do you manage all these things? That's the that's the one of the challenges that even I myself find, right? Okay. Of course, then also the coming of AI, right? Uh, any of you already digital artists here? Not yet. No one. Anyone considering to be a digital artist? Oh, not really. It's all IT, yeah. 
all programmers. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he, he, now you can generate code as well, right? Yeah, so AI, there's a lot of fear whenever uh, think people think about AI coming to the marketplace, right? Of course, not to kill you yet, uh, but maybe, let's say, to take your job, sir. So that's a big fear. I don't know. Like, for example, this is one of the AI-generated works that actually won a, won an award, and then there was a big uh, hoo-ha about it, uh, right? Like, like will the will AI come and take the, over all the art competitions? How do you how do you compete with something that can generate artworks in maybe five seconds or ten seconds, right? Or even video like this is the latest stuff from uh, Sora. Yeah. They so basically from a text prompt you actually get a video. There are some limitations if you look closely. Yes, right. So the prompt is below. And then the image is above. Right. So these are all generated. Right. Okay, we won't see all of it. You can check it out online, right? This is a, uh, just got this from WhatsApp. So basically, someone generated, used an image of Audrey Hepburn and made her sing. And so they, they fed her voice into the machine. Sing Ed Kieran. We were just kids when we fell in love, not knowing what it was. So, yeah, so I would say that although it's scary, right, uh, the important thing is we have to be adaptable. Uh, one of my parting tips, uh, running out of time, right? right? So being adaptable is where artists, we can't just reject technology. We got to actually, I would say, embrace it and all everyone become an AI prompter, right? But we got to also figure out how this can work and improve our workflow. I can tell you now, most of the bigger studios now, right, have implemented AI to some extent, right? Uh, because why it makes things faster, certain things that are more menial can be done faster, right? And sing, and people can actually produce more stuff, you know? And uh, they don't waste their time so much. I do also have artist friends who are anti the technology, like vehemently like, oh, I'll never accept this, never, you know? Yeah. So the dangerous part is if you're like that, then you get left out. Because I am old enough to come from a time when people were complaining about Photoshop. You guys know what Photoshop is, right? Say digital art is not real art. <laughs> use a digital, use a tablet, software, and mouse and keyboard. That's not real art, right? Real art is basically painting and stuff, traditional oil and canvas, right? And now, nowadays, it's already accepted. No one, no one even brings it up anymore. So every new technology that comes in, you're gonna face the same thing. There's gonna be some pushback, right? So for you who are considering a future as a programmer or artist in this field, right? Don't abuse the technology, but learn how to make it work for you. Right, that's my, my advice. Okay, now, last tips, be involved. I'm saying that if you want to go into this field, be involved in, 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 in the industry itself. Go for all the association meetings, engage, meet the people from different companies, right? Put yourself out there. In Malaysia, we have something called Game Dev Hangout where we do it every uh, quarterly. So the community gets together. There's about sometimes 200 to 300 people. It's, get, get, it's getting out of hand now, basically. Right, where we go to someone's studio, have a huge demo session, we do play testing and all that. So uh, it's always recommended if your lecturers have a chance to do these kind of events, attend any, right? Uh, because you, it's, it makes it so much more sense when you know the industry that you are going into and you can find out for yourself, is this really where you want to go, right? Uh, money comes with value. Some of you might feel that, oh, first job pays so horrible. I don't, is there a future, right? Build your value. That means the more you know, the more valuable you are, the more indispensable you are, right? If I can just draw great, if I can draw and animate, even better. If I can draw, animate, and I have good art sense, whoa, then you're much, much more valuable, right? So the more things you know, the more valuable you are, and people pay for that, right? Uh, ideas, I, I don't mean it, as well, I don't see me, ideas are worthless, right? But ideas are only of value if you can create, turn it into something tangible, right? If it's in your head, it can be the most fantastic movie in the world, right? But no one's going to watch it because it's, it's all stuck in your mind, right? Always focus more on execution and getting it out there.
rather than keeping an idea. Even if it means sometimes working with people, right, collaborating, these are all important things to learn how to do instead of like, oh, I'm going to learn programming, I'm going to learn art, I'm going to learn design, I'm going to hide in the corner of my house and I'm going to make the best game ever and be the solo developer. Right? It might take you 20 years. Uh, right? So co collaborating, working with people is the best way to uh, achieve your goals, uh, I would say. Uh, keep a journal, simple one. Uh, most of the time you have ideas, keep a journal by yourself, your bed. Write notes, take notes, right? Uh, because our memories are getting worse and worse by every every consecutive generation, right? Uh, and lastly is uh, be a jack of all trades uh, and hopefully a master of one or two. So basically, you should know the entire discipline in and out, right? You should be at least average in every single skill set that you study. Right? But do try to pick a couple of skill sets that you want to focus on and be good at that. Because that's the only way companies will want to hire you. Right? If you there's always two pathways, either the, the path of a generalist or the path of a specialist. If you be a generalist, sometimes you're more inclined to uh, be business people, right? Because you know the, the ins and outs of the industry, right? And therefore you can adapt better. Right? But if you be a specialist with time, you can earn a very, very good living. All right, I think my time's up. I think this is my last slide, Ring. Yes, it's my last slide. Good job. All right, so thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'll be around if there's a... There's no, there's no Q&A, right? There's no Q&A session, right? Okay. Uh, oh, okay, okay, yeah. So we'll be around. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Yi Van from MDEC for the very informative rep, uh, presentation. We would now like to invite our next speaker, Mr. Ridwan Azhar, Project Executive at Cool Code Sundian Berhad. Okay. All right. Assalamualaikum. Good evening, everyone. So how is everyone feeling? Okay, we can proceed. Yeah, it's a little bit late and you guys already had lunch, right? <laughs> so it's a proper condition to sleep in. <laughs> All right. Okay, so my name is Rizwan. Uh, I'm from JB. Uh, we are a software house company. Uh, basically, we do mobile apps, websites, and even games. Okay, so game is actually one part of our business streamline. Okay, so we started in 2014. Uh, back then, we are all uh, students from UTM. Uh, why this slide? Okay, so back then, we are all students from UTM. Uh, we have a lot of uh, skill sets. Uh, some are great at making mobile apps, some are great at making system. And a uh, few of us are doing great at making games. All right, so it's not actually a game, but um, multimedia at the time. Okay. Uh, so in 2014, so we started a really small company named Sejuk Studio. Okay, so it's very local company, yeah, Sejuk Studio. Okay, Sejuk means cold. Okay, uh, so we try to incorporate to Singapore High and name it Cool Code Cinema Height. All right, so it's very, look like a Steve Jobs warehouse <laughs> kind of vibe, something like that, All right? So we have a few people chipping in, uh, some are designers, some are mobile app developers, okay? So we're taking a few interns to minimize some costs, uh, right? So all over the three years, and then, then we try to grow into a proper team, okay? So in 2017, we get out of uh, UTM. So UTM already provide us with uh, incubator platform. So they call uh, MagiX, Media and Game Innovation Center of Excellence. So that's in JB. Uh, so we don't have the privileges that you have over here. Okay, so in Johor Bahru, there's no agencies that would empower game developments. Okay, so we are on our own at that time. So, so but that didn't give us to lost hope. So we follow our passions, basically. Uh, we have few connections uh, with the strong IP. 
So until last year, so we move up to UTM back because uh, there's a potential uh, growth in talents over there. So they have a few courses uh, for graphics and multimedia. And also there's a good uh, platform where we can train some people to be in our team. All right, so basically the, the incubator provides us with a lot of uh, recording rooms, uh, presentations room, and everything, all the facilities that you need. So this is in Magic X. All right, so until currently, so we are based in Medini. Okay, so Medi is in Iskandar Putri. So there's a few companies over there actually, uh, Korean, Korean companies, uh, German companies. Uh, there's a lot of uh, investors chipping in. Uh, actually, there's a two uh, Japanese game studio over there, Okakichi and also Deluxe Game. All right, so even our staff members is already interested to go there. <laughs> okay, all right, so moving forward. Uh, so this is our clients and partners over the years. Of course, MDEC is there, always with us uh, since the beginning of our journey. And also uh, Astro, by the way. So our first products is actually a DD and Friend games. Mm, yeah, I can feel now what I even feeling. The control is not responsive. <laughs> okay, so this is our core services, mobile apps, uh, uh, game and systems. So we call ourselves a play lab for the game teams. Okay. okay. Oh, it's like a chip small. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, okay. So our game team is, uh, we're trying to make games that simply fit for our team and resource. So it must be like a mobile games and then it's a 2D generated games, um, more interactive. And of course, we're trying to implement a new technology such as AR, okay? So the first product, uh, th this is actually the previous product in Sejuk Studio. Okay, so Super Sleeper, back then there says no much game in the Space Store. Okay, so we're trying to convert a traditional games into a digital games. So back then, if you are familiar with uh, Tuju Sleeper, uh, local people, so, so Tuju Sleeper, so we're trying to convert into a digital platform. So you have to throw the sleeper away from the tree uh, tower over there. Okay, so next is more like a RPG game. So you have to scatter around finding letters and complete it to form a Jawi letter. Uh, so this is kind of like a edutainment kind of uh, concept. So most of our game is actually focusing on uh, edutainment and also casual games. So what I'm trying to tell over here, games doesn't mean actually for hyper casual. You can implement values for to them. I mean, you can go into healthcare, you can go to automotive, you can go to education and combine it with your games. So in our case, this, this is a DD and friend. So it's a very strong IP. Uh, DD and DD and friend. Everyone know DD and friend, right? So everyone sing in the toilet as well, singing mengantuk mengantuk or ABC tayabas or anything. So everyone has children. I think they are familiar with this also. Okay, so back then when I'm doing these uh, games, uh, basically uh, makan, tidur, everything is, uh, is coding and of course the, the song is keep ringing in my, in my brain. So <laughs> you play you play hundreds and thousands of the song in your mind, right? you're trying to get, to get some seat, they're still playing around. <laughs> okay, so back then Didi and Friend is still not famous, they are producing DVD. So I, I, I'm not sure it still exists in your era or not, DVD. Okay, so they partner up with Astro, still at the earlier stage, and then they publish it into a YouTube channel. Okay, so that is where the first season is uh, 12 or 13 games, uh, 13 songs for kids. So what we did is we approached them and then try to make a game for each of their songs. So ABC have uh, their own song. So I Pasandalam have their own song. So each of uh, every song they have, we convert it into games. Some games are integrated with uh, education kind of uh, gameplay and some are even casual just to pick their interest in playing. 
All right. Okay. So back in 2016, we we achieved this almost like a 12 month developments, but we did speed up the developments into eight months. Uh, okay. So when we launched Didi and Friends, uh, it in line with the top liner. I mean, Pokemon Go. Everyone play Pokemon Go, right? Candy Crush, Subway Surfer. Uh, could you imagine our local content is in line with others out there? Okay, so this, this is a biggest achievement for us at that time. I mean, we are very small studios, but we get this kind of recognition from the store itself. Best game of 2016 at that time. All right, so moving forward three years after that, we're still on the top three and top grossing. Uh, we place it under Astro. Uh, very minimal marketing, but then again, uh, it's still uh, catchable for parents to download and play with it. So one of the comments uh, that intrigued us, basically, uh, this Amin means, uh, okay? So he got a child, basically had aut autism, five years, uh, having trouble to focus on the learnings. Uh, so uh, rearranging the letters, and then they are gladly can learn better throughout our game. So these are the values that the, the objective itself. I mean, we're trying to do goods for people. So the, we, if you have value in your games, the people will start download and play with it. Okay, all right. So I saw, I'm sorry, the, the date is a bit outdated, but then the three years back, it's already 4.6 million downloads and uh, play. And of course, the screen time, the screen view is almost 1 billion. I think. Uh, so there's uh, so many hours are playing into this. Okay, so and on average monthly is basically 130K user on monthly basis. Uh, I think it's already going up. So sorry, it's not updated. So, okay, so here's some preview of the game. So we just uh, press graduate and then we do this game. So you can expect the quality is uh, some sort of like an internship level. So this is back 2015 and 16, 15, 16. Huh? This is inspired by like uh, Talking Tom or Ginger. Uh, you can play with the cat, uh, dress it up. Uh, Mini Hawaiian is like a uh, sound uh, matching, matching, cross matching for kids. So this is more like uh, connecting the dots and somehow empowering the kids' imagination. Let's try. It's like a remember. Uh, so this is a coloring game. Uh, they have to follow the pictures and everything. Uh, quite simple first because we actually target this for three to seven years old. And basically, if they we can test it over events and they have no trouble playing this game. I think kids nowadays are more advanced than adults. <laughs> so, Taya Bass in the MV, they are going around the London town. So, we try to simulate the same gameplay. Uh, uh, crossing the road and everything. Yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> okay, all right. So we partner up this with Astro and also Digital Durian at the time. Uh, currently, they are named uh, Warna Kala for DDM Friends. Okay, so moving forward, the client impress and also they are looking forward for the next games. So this is what we launched uh, last two years, I think. Infinite Ninja and also Classroom. 
Okay, so one is more like a hyper casual game and another one is uh, e-learning platform for kids. Okay, so they have like uh, English, maths, science, Bahasa Melayu. Kawan-kawan, hari ini kita ada misi di angka selepas. Tiga, dua, satu... Terbang ke angkasa Pergi ke bulan Pergi ke bulan Jom kita pergi ke atas bulan Zoom, zoom, zoom Alright, okay. So, we both have to play our parts. Basically, they are providing us with an IP. We do all the games developments. Marketing comes from both sides. Okay, so that video is actually a combined project also. Alright, so this is three product is in the store right now. So, you may download and give your review. All right, throughout the, the collaborations, of course, we, we hand in hand helping them with events, uh, try to get up exposure for the games. I mean, to get more downloads, to get uh, more, more people's users down, uh, playing it. And of course, we receive uh, great feedback from the parents themselves, also some feedback to improve our games. So this is what happens uh, with local games. They don't improve over time. I mean, uh, they just build it one time and then leave it over there. So what we did is basically we get the feedback and then improve it over time. All right, so comes next IP is Oma and Hana. So do you guys know Oma and Hana? Yeah, it's as an Islamic content basically. So currently it's in Durio Plus. Uh, all right, so back then this is in 2019. So we make it more like, a, uh, some of it is Islamic content and some is more like a moral value content. So slash casual uh, yeah so you have like a seven mini game so most of our games we try to incorporate something like a freemium app okay so it's a free to play games but then again for extra contents in the games you, you have to access by paying something okay so right now is really seamless you can link with your telco you can link with your uh, debit cards and everything so even the kids is accidentally try to purchase accidentally so the parents just allow it okay so these are the challenges basically so when we're trying to make a game for kids we the content itself is targeted to the kids but then again for the purchasing power i mean the purchasing power is still on the parents themselves so we have to impress the parents in order for the games to be purchased and play with uh, through the kids okay so indirectly we not cover only three to seven years old but actually the parents themselves so the parents uh, demographic is somehow like a 20 25 to 35 years old have one or two kids uh, Aplikasi Oma dan Hana on duty ada tujuh permainan yang comel yeah. dan seronok. So, like Semua permainan room, direka khas like berdasarkan cruise, lagu dan kisah uh, Oma dan Hana. Jom uh, belajar sambil uh, bermain secara interaktif bersama Oma dan Hana. Uh, there is something like a harvest moon Jom over there. Jom di Google Play dan Apple App Store sekarang. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alright. Okay, so when we release our Oma and Hana, they are uh, fight to fight with we on, on our other product, so Didi and Friend. So it's either Oma Hana or Didi and Friend at the top of the top grossing, trending and grossing at that time. All right, so other than the collaboration with the IPs, we did have our own uh, IP as well. So it's called Nora and Abu. So we have Jawi Games. So this one is integrated with uh, augmented reality so what we discovered at the time so Malaysia is very late actually so AR has been established uh, 10 years ago but it's getting hype uh, five years ago I think uh, so it's very late technology in in Malaysia 
uh, when we launch this kind of product, people are amazed or uh, something that could augment it in their phones in their real life. Okay, so this is uh, advice for those who don't know what is AR is, is a totally reverse from VR. So on VR, we actually involve in the, the virtual reality. We go into the virtual world. So this is what we bring up the, the virtual things into our own world. So you, when you scan something, it appears something. Okay, so on this case, we scan a few letters from uh, Alif to Ya, I mean the, the Arabic language, uh, Arabic letters. Uh, there's uh, about 36 letters. So inside the games, you have like a practice game, learning games, and also for parent dashboard. So this is important actually. When you are making games, so when our target is for kids, but then again, we have to target the parents because they have the purchasing power. So a value for parents is actually, they want to know how the kid perform in the games. They want to know what the kids are playing in the game. Okay, so that is where in the app, so we have actually a section for parents to review the performance of the kids, how many hours they, have, they spend, what games are they are playing, everything. So bear in mind that is something that you might want to look at. Okay, so this is a video. Can you can you play the video? I'm not sure if I press this. Okay. Play lab. So this is one uh, we promote the flashcard. So we take a few students from uh, preschool uh, I don't know how they're acting, but, but they are something like that. actually when we are doing this okay so you, you sell your app for a premium content and then you sell the flash card so double the incomes okay so not just a digital that is something that uh skeptical in Malaysia people tend to not purchasing something that is digital at a time so they, they tend to buy out something that is tangible a physical product so that is where the flash card, flash card comes in. So the kids can play with the app, and the kids can play with the card. And if they combine it all together, they have a new experience of mental reality. So in your game, if you have uh, something of new technology that you could be integrated. Cool code play lab at our website. All right. Okay. So if you can see over here, uh, the flashcard is actually the third version of uh, uh, iteration of the, the the AR technology. The first one we make a uh, uh, poster. If you can see on the picture number one. So the problem with the picture, uh, the, the poster. I mean, uh, it's hard to scan, and the kids is hard to play around. It's placing on the wall. Okay, so when you are doing some products, in fact, this kind of product, you have to do a bit of R&D. You have to try and error, something like that. So, so flashcard is actually the, the matured product of the poster. Okay, so you can see when you go to events and everything, so it sell out really fast uh, because people are intrigued with the AR technology. All right, so next is Ikra. So Ikra, this is uh, for learning Quran. So from Ikra 1 to 6, uh, there's a few uh, letters that they have to remember and how to pronounce it. So this is actually we, we discuss with uh, Tafis, uh, local Tafis, and then we test it out and uh, it's really good to go. Then we pitch to uh, MDEC actually. Uh, so these are the, the video of the game. So let me try playing it. Okay. Same concept, it's a premium app, so it's free to play, but the two contents they have the access to some payments. Uh, it's a simple game for kids to learn how to read Quran.
okay and previous previous slide yeah. okay all right okay so for ikra we actually won a uh, intellectual property challenge creative challenge uh, so this is by mdac so right now i think it's changed name right digital content grant i think dcg is it uh, so i'm not sure but uh, really for mdac they are empowering for creative contents or uh, comics uh, short animations animation and even digital games so if we got for fifty thousand ringgit for that kind of product. So we pitched to MDAC, so Rainbow Ikra. Uh, it's a six months program, I think. Uh, so what do you think? 50,000, 50, is it many or less? Less. Okay, so could you, could you imagine our team is uh, like a three people, each one is fresh graduate, 3,000 ringgit. So 9,000, so times six, what? How many, nine times six? 45, 46. <laughs> Okay, fail at math. <laughs> okay, so 50,000 is not too many, but again, that then again, is still a free money that we could help with our OPEX. Okay, so the, the game is out there and all, it's ready for downloads and people are already purchasing it. So back to the, it cover up 50,000 ringgit. Okay, let me skip this part. Uh, so over my slide, it have a lot of products. So I think we can skip few products. Okay, so we have a lot of products lined up. So this is our IP, Abu Enora, as I mentioned. Okay, so when we do a 2D, over the time, it's get bored. Okay, it's get, getting getting less attraction. So we try to make it into 3D and go for animations. So if you can see the trends, uh, they are games company are trying to go into movies, animations. Uh, so that is a uh, big dreams that we have uh, over the time. So we're trying to make the game character alive by doing animations. Uh, so this is something planned over time. So another product is AR coloring. Okay, so for AR technology, as you already, the mainstream is you scan something, it will appear an object or a media or something. But this time when you are coloring it, let, let's say the cat is color red. So when you scan the cat with animate with the color red. Okay, so this book is really selling really well as well. Uh, it's just we don't have the fund to marketing it over Malaysia. Uh, it's just online. All right, so when we do animations and games, uh, we attracted some influencers, artists, celebrities. Uh, on this case is uh, Nyalofa. Okay, at the time she's still not married, so that's why I smile. Okay, so right now he's already married, so lucky. It's a lot of controversial. Okay, all right. So the Nor Kids, uh, this is something that in plan. Uh, basically, if you go into the Nor app, okay, the Nor app is actually a, a Muslim lifestyle app. You can see all the prayers times and everything. Uh, inside there, uh, inside Discover, you can find all our apps: Rainbow Ikra, Jawi, uh, Asma Husna, all there. Okay, so moving forward, we have more games in collaboration with the Nor. All right, so Playwright Classroom, this is something similar to DDM Frank Classroom. So we target During a pandemic, uh, as a parent, we're platform. really worried uh, about a little okay. one learning Science progress, man. are we? No worries. Now, Selco has a learning game app for your child. And as, uh, this is the first time we collaborate with... And it has 70 types of games Pro. for them to play. In this year. More. So let me skip this. Yeah, these are the subject, the core values. Uh, and amazingly, this sub, uh, this uh, games, actually, we didn't make it by ourselves. It's actually a pro, uh, collaboration with the uh, Kemas Tadika. So we're trying to follow curriculum standard Praskola and try to make the game. The same concept that we do for DDN fans. We study the video MV and then convert it into games. So in, in this sense, uh, we're trying to convert the curriculum standard into games. Okay, so these are the session with the uh, teachers, uh, preschool teachers. Okay, so we do some merchandise, of course, uh, some coloring online. Uh, so this is our engagement with the kids. Yeah, this is some videos, uh, the winners and everything. So uh, pardon my slide, there's a lot of things I try to put in. But then again, this is an old slide. I'm just putting it all together. 
all right so this is an intro so like i said we're trying to go into animations uh, whoa, whoa. how to get next okay and already try at job launch we 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 try to present it into the community to get more exposure yeah so with Cellcom, of course, we have engagement with Cellcom. So if you go into Cellcom Live app, it's already our app over there. So you can go through the Eduwala Plus. There's a session, a postpaid plus our games. Uh, so these are the things. It's not just developing games, but you need to engage any of business or parties. Like ourselves, we engage with the IP owners, we engage with telcos, we engage with celebrities, and a lot of things. Uh, for this one, we do for Setia Haruman. Uh, so it's a very short game. Uh, I mean, I develop it uh, alone. So all this is all mine alone uh, for two months, I think. It's a multi uh, multiplayer uh, online game. This is for events. So they're trying to attract people to go to the booth. So they're showing out a big screen over here. They, they can play all around, play with their phones, and then the character will be on the screen. Right, so these are the video of the gameplay. Mm, oh, okay, it skip. Okay, that, it's okay. All right. Uh, okay, so another implementation of AR we do for automotive. So it's like a game like uh, you see on Jarvis. So it's uh, Iron Man open up uh, components of the body suit, right? So it's something similar to the engine. You can explode some engine components and then put it all together. So like I said, over here, games doesn't have to mean like you're playing around with, with uh, media content and everything. So you can implement it in uh, education, uh, healthcare, automotive in this case. Uh, so a lot of uh, industry, you can actually integrate games into it. Yeah, let me skip this. Okay, so this is uh, some of the example of game uh, assembly for engine. Uh, so it gives a basic uh, view and then you merge some components and uh, try to build an engine. Okay, so the problem is when uh, the lecturer itself, so they have problems like 30 students try to disassemble an engine, one engine, 30 students. Right, so what they do is they approach us and then try to make a game that they can learn virtually, digitally, uh, where the component is, how to 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 get them assembled, uh, what are their functions and everything. So in a short timeline, uh, so we got some some rewards and everything. Uh, so this is one of the example. Okay, next. How to go next? So this is one of our other product, VR. So Tesling. So this is engaged with uh, Puspacom. So we have like seven layers of inspection for the car. So it has like a light intensity checking, carbon monoxide checking, uh, everything on the checking layer. So we're trying to make it virtually. Uh, yeah, I think you guys can make this game, right? Simple. this i think the time is yeah all right so another game this is uh, more like casual for empowering brands so zamburger tower burger it's like a stacking game so what what we did is basically uh we reward someone uh on a monthly basis 1000 ringgit if they can make it the highest uh, that is for the zamburger company itself uh, so it's like a marketing strategy. So game for branding, for marketing is also a plus. Okay, so another implementation of game. So this is a gamification on entrepreneurship. So I built this for drive and energy drinks. So what I did is a simulations of uh, operations, how the company makes the drinks. I mean, you have to set up a few factories, uh, some supply, then your logistics and your management come for lawyers, marketing, corporates. So it's a, a simu simulation games. All right. So could anyone 
tell me how long does it take for us to make this? It, we consist of like uh, two developers and one designer. How many? Three months. Anyone else? Six months. Okay, let me disclose it for you. So I tried to make this game in 36 hours. It's actually a hackathon event. So in JB, right? So we got ourselves like a 10,000 ringgit over time. This, this is our uh, launch in weekends. So all of us uh, got a grand prize, first place. And then a special prize, crowd favorite. I mean, we're fighting alongside uh, Singaporean companies, local companies, and even university com uh, students. Uh, so their product is much like a uh, blockchain, fintech, and along. So come us a game. We're making a game simulations. Uh, but then again, we won a first prize. Uh, there's a lot of category, but then again, they choose us. Why? I mean, for game, it's unique. I mean, you can see it. You can play around with it. You have a good objective. What you're trying to achieve is solve some problems, real problems. I mean, this can be achievable. Uh, so we get a first, a first place because our objective is strong. The game itself serves the purpose to empowering them to how to operate a business with zero, I mean, zero uh, casualties. I mean, if you're starting a business, you burn 10,000, 10,000 burn. So in a game, you, uh, you lose, lose nothing. Okay. So, and also for the drive employee, they can also uh, play the game in order to learn about the SOPs and everything. So that is another objective. Uh, so it depends on what type of game you want to be trying to make. Okay. Try to make it work for your clients. Uh, all right. Okay. So that is a hackathon. Uh, if you can see less sleep, more coffee, uh, like that. <laughs> Yeah, and another tips, pitching is also crucial. I mean, for you guys to get uh, investors uh, interested, to get client interested, you have to pitch really well. Okay, so our product has all go into uh, local channels, uh, TV Al Hijra, uh, and also we have further cover on Bernama News News channel. Basically, they are inviting us for local contents uh, being put up. So. We explain about our DDM friends and um, most of our product, other product. Hmm. So Vocat, yeah, a lot of media coverage, Amans, uh, and also at that time, uh, mystery organization, uh, this is something that I need to hide. <laughs> okay, so over the years, uh, we won a few awards and everything. Uh, comes to another chapter of, of our business nature. So CCA, Academy. So when we did uh, products and everything, so we're trying to uh, grow as well. So this is CCA comes from. So you guys have uh, interesting, uh, try to go into game development or anything. You guys try to get uh, some help so we can help you guys. I mean, in terms of game developments, uh, how to design, how to make the games. Uh, we have a few portfolio actually. We did a Tech Olympic event back in two years ago. Uh, with uh, Meranti, so the Olympics with Meranti. So we try to teach uh, primary school, uh, secondary school, how to coding, how to play the games. So in, in this sense, uh, me, myself, a trainer and level up MDEC for secondary school. So even, could you imagine, a primary school and secondary school are already making games. So what are you guys over here? <laughs> Feel threatened? Uh, okay, so you have to be more better than them. I mean, they are capable, they are new generations. Uh, try to catch up with them. Okay, so, all right. So this is basically a lot of uh, seminars that I'm doing with a lot of local universities, telling them this, this is not actually uh, on game, actually it's in, in the IT sector as well. So mobile app, system, websites, uh, games included as well. Yeah, a lot of portfolio over here. Uh, next, 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 next. Uh, yeah, you need my over there just now. Uh, so, okay, all right. So this is uh, comes the promotion. Is anyone, anyone interested doing internship or even a career with us? You can apply to career at kuko.my. Uh, 
So we have real projects going on. So we're trying to find a good, really good talents to be one of our teams. Uh, of course, you will be provided with monthly allowance and of course, a uh, few guidance with our mentors and real project that you can include in your portfolio. All right, so that's all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you, if you have any question, you can email me or maybe later on you can catch up with me. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ridwan, for the very interesting presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is a seasoned game developer with eight years of experience. His diverse and passionate journey from a biotech graduate to a versatile professional highlights the limitless opportunities in the gaming industries. Let's welcome our third speaker, Mr. Muhammad Faris Aburrahim from Todak Studios, Rian Berhad. I'm not at all. All right. Hello, assalamualaikum and good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Faris. Yep, over there. Thank you for the um, to, to the organizers, to the universities, my fellow uh, speakers, um, and everyone here today. Uh, hopefully, today will be an interesting topic for you guys uh, to learn more about game development. So, before I start, I would like to ask. Uh, you guys, um, has anyone here developed a game either for themselves or a company before? Yes, yes, okay, a, a few of you. Um, are you guys uh, mostly in game development or something similar? Is there anyone that is not from game development background that is here? Okay, we have a few more people. All right, cool. Um, yeah, uh, first of all, um, Okay, there you go. That's me. So my name is Mama Faris Biadur Rahim. I'm the business development uh, support director of Todak Studios uh, since 2021. So my background is actually not in video game. Um, oh, I can see over here. I, I forgot. Okay. Um, let me see. Things. Okay, there you go. So my degree is in biotechnology. Um, I even traveled to the US to study that. <laughs> and then I came back. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of biotechnology going on in Malaysia. So um, I work a little bit in the in the biotechnology field in like research and, and here and there. Uh, but then um, I, I decided to, to pursue my passion, which is in game development. So I jumped ship to a different industry. Uh, so previously, um, I've worked with, um, you know, um, like a biotech company, uh, and then also I opened my own uh, company selling um, art art uh, supplies, and then me and my brother decided to uh, start a game development company on our own. Uh, he has more experience in game development than me when we started because he worked like uh, maybe at that time was already seven eight years with other people and he said that uh, I'm done working with other people <laughs> so I want to you know uh, start something that we can control on our own because at that time game development industry is not that big in Malaysia I think it was about 2016 there is game, uh, game industry in Malaysia but a lot of time the company is um, is hit by people who are not from the industry, uh, is that, does that make sense? Meaning that um, their, their mindset is a little bit different. But nowadays we see a lot of people, especially the younger generation, they love games. They are into game development. They're not like business people just for the sake of business. Um, so there, there's passion in it. So we, we see that the, the industry in Malaysia is also growing um, you know, steadily, okay? Uh, and then uh, recently, uh, about two years ago, joined Todak Studios for, uh, as a business development. All right. And then my, I believe I put, yeah, interest is um, 
I, I, I love playing games. Um, most of the time I'll play like survival or management games. Uh, and then I also love music. All right, so that's a little bit about myself. So Todak as a company, um, you may or may have heard of it, uh, but most probably you don't know that Todak is actually also developing games. Um, so under Todak, Todak is a holding company. We have uh, six Sanja Merhat companies under Todak brand. So the first one is Todak Culture, uh, started in 2017, involved um, in merchandising, apparels, lifestyle kind of thing. Uh, so you probably have seen like our uh, gaming chairs or peripherals here and there. Uh, and then in 2018, um, Todak Studios was started um, as a game development company uh, for, for like uh, two years since uh, the start of the company, uh, Todak Studios, uh, sorry, yeah, Todak Studios, um, most of the efforts actually focusing on uh, training and researching our, our group, uh, the group. So a lot of times uh, people won't know about Todak Studios because we are kind of like low key at that time. And then uh, in 2019, we also have another company set up uh, called Todak Fusion involving in uh, entertainment, music, uh, probably heard um, a few artists previously with them like Shahzikir um, and Fat Majid. And then we also have uh, next company is Todak Academy in the creative, uh, creative education. So they also have like a game development, um, how to be a professional player for uh, esports, how to be a, a manager for esports team. Uh, that kind of uh, classes. They also recently started um, like a 3D asset uh, course for diploma. And then next, uh, we also have to pay for the payment system. Uh, and this is for digital payment for currencies like yeah, for in-game and, and social media. Then last, we have Todak Digitech. Uh, it's, this is our software development uh, house. Uh, and most probably, if you know Todak, uh, you probably know because of our, our community, which is the strongest uh, in um, the gaming side. Uh, we have a few, um, how you say, it, like um, um, esports, professional esports teams for Mobile Legends, um, Valorant, Free Fire, and, and a few others. Uh, some of them still uh, ongoing, uh, and then some of them already stopped. Uh, but yeah, so most probably uh, if people know Todak is because from the gaming side. So Todak is already quite established in the esports scene in the consumer side. Uh, but we also actually are building our portfolio to strengthen our um, industry development side. Okay, so that's a little bit about Todak. <clears throat> so Todak Studios. So uh, this is the first game um, developed by my previous company, uh, Studio Kami and Todak Studios. Uh, so this is a, a survival adventure game. Um, at that time it was 2019. Um, we were trying to create a, a, a survival game that is not, uh, you know, like very gory and and horrible kind of thing. So we we, we tried like a survival game with a cute and um, you know lively kind of uh, image. Uh, and this um, this is our product uh, that is currently available on Steam. Uh, it started as a 2D um, management resource management game, uh, but eventually we uh, we we change the the concept, the design, the idea uh, to fit better with the market uh, trend at the time, which is a lot of people are looking to play uh, survival games. And then our and then not long after we launched this game, uh, it's actually pandemic, uh, and everyone is staying at home so we decided to make another game uh, which is based on our childhood game uh, of police entry uh, basically it's just cops and chase uh, games so this is developed uh, when we are working from home everyone was working from home uh, the development period is not that long i think about six or five six months um, we are incorporating uh, like a Malaysian kind of uh, cartoon style uh, in the design as well. Uh, so it's a very quick and fun uh, gameplay, less than five minutes, uh, so that people can play uh, with their friends during the, the pandemic time. Uh, so yeah, that's our second uh, product. Uh, and then 
here comes our latest project, which is Mastra. So um, how I'm going to do the presentation today is basically to, um, <clears throat> to go overview uh, on the game development, like how we, we plan, how we do the game development side. But at the same time, I will try to, um, to fit it in with what we are currently doing, which is uh, Mastra. Okay, so first of all, what is Mastra? So Mastra is a, it's a multiplayer online battle arena, MOBA. So if you guys are familiar um, with uh, genres, uh, the MOBA genres is quite popular uh, in Malaysia and also worldwide. Uh, in Malaysia or in the Southeast Asian region, uh, MOBA is more popular, popular as a mobile game. But in certain parts of uh, the world, uh, people play MOBA primarily on PC with like Dota, League of Legends and, and such. But in Malaysia, we, um, a lot of players are playing uh, mobile on their phone. So this game <clears throat> that we are going to de develop is going to be on phone. Um, we introduce another element into the MOBA genre. So it's not like the normal um, MOBA per se. Um, when we, we do product development or you know generating ideas, we also need to consider like what would make us uh, different or like how do we inject new things in the genre that is well established. So one of the things that we do is that we add elements to the game. So this is not a new thing in game. We have a lot of elements in different genre, RPG maybe, but not so much in MOBA. So this is something that we are very excited to do. Um, and then we are also based the game uh, on the in the Sundalan region, uh, the plate tectonic, the Sunda plate, uh, basically covering uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei, and Thailand, and the surrounding region a little bit. Okay, so the game will be um, developed and launched for a uh, mobile platform. All right, mm, let me see. Okay, I guess we'll start with this first. So this is um, a trailer that we will develop in-house uh, for the game. Uh, it's like a, a review trailer that we are currently doing this project. So um, yeah, I guess here it is. So the first part is mostly uh, just focusing on the company. So like most of the, the, the pipeline that we do, we do it uh, in-house. Kuasa. Kuasa itu perantaraan dunia antara manusia dan ipiannya. Siapa yang lebih berkuasa? Siapa yang inginkan kuasa? Gelora pergolakan kuasa tidak pernah sehebat ini. Dalam zaman anak-anak dibangkitkan dengan kesaktian yang digunakan oleh mantra utama. Wira-wira dunia bertanding merampas kesaktian, mematangkan saka. Untuk darah, buah, kepercayaan atau didorong kedengkian, kebongkakan demi mengejar gelaran agung. So yeah, so this is like the first scene that you'll see in the game. Uh, you start on a ship, lah, basically, to the battlefield. Okay, so uh, the game will be out hopefully in Q4 2024, not long, uh, maybe like six, seven months, eight months from now. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit like how um, we do the, like from our perspective, like how we do the development planning of the project. Uh, so first of all, um, we'll start with like, 
the first thing when we do uh, or anything uh, most most probably is from ideation right so you want to you know decide like what you want to do so when we get together to discuss about it um we immediately uh, decided that this is not just going to be a game so we decided to make it um a world um that we we are building to cater to the game that we want to make so the first step is actually um, generating ideas on what the world gonna be, uh, is gonna, going to be, where is it located, what it, you know, like when does it take place, and kind of thing. Um, but um, and and so we build the world, and was uh, it also based on our vision and dream? Uh, we want to create um, something that is focusing on our culture, or the uh, you know not just Malaysia but the surrounding region as well. And then um, we also want to tell stories through the game, even though it's, you know, the game can be like MOBA, uh, which most probably doesn't have a lot of stories in it. Um, but we still want to tell some kind of stories uh, in some way, uh, whether through the game or, you know, like our materials outside of the game. And then the, the three things that we also want to focus on is about culture uh, and then history and also um, focusing on the the younger generation, so like what we can bring to the table by using this product. So this is the first thing that we came up. Uh, after that, we do a lot of research. Um, we come up with um, a world that we created uh, called the uh, Mastra. And, the, and so the first thing we did was to determine when is it going to happen. So we we do a lot of research on like the history, what happened in the region, what are the big um, the civilization, the kingdoms from you know way before, uh, like from the zero century to like the seventh or you know like twenty twentieth century. So what kind of governments come and go uh, along the time? Uh, and then we can also create uh, characters that is integrated into the world that we, we are creating. So we have these prominent figures. We have the people who are associated with them. Um, we also next, we create locations like the cities. Um, you know, where does this take place? Uh, we chose um, a place called Kataha. So for you guys, if you know a little bit of uh, history, Kataha is actually one of the name of the old um, uh, city in Kedah. Uh, in the in the uh, kerajaan Kedah Tua. we also create like stories. So what happened during that time? Uh, we research a lot on like um, what are the the rituals or what are the ceremonies happening? Not just uh, you know at the Kedah Tua area, but also in the surrounding regions like Champa, uh, Shivijaya, you know diff different areas uh, in the in the Sundaland region. So uh, we do also go to different places in Malaysia and Indonesia. Um, next, uh, we also want to focus more like Thailand and different other places. Uh, we collect resources, uh, ideas, um, historic facts. Um, our game is not going to be historical accurate per se, but we are referencing historical events, um, you know, uh, civilizations, uh, and heroes from that time. And so we created the world of Mastra. OK. Uh, and then once we have the idea, right, uh, in, in game development, once you already have the idea, the idea maybe start from like, you know, just in your head or maybe like in your notebook or you just scribble something when you are eating lunch kind of thing. But you once you have the idea, um, then you have to decide like, where do you want to go from there, right? Uh, so and before you even start developing the game, you need to do some planning. OK, so in game development, we have uh, multiple stages of development. Uh, the first of all is uh, planning, the one that I mentioned just now about the world of Mastra. So what are we building in the first place, right? What is our budget? Uh, who is our audience? Who do we want to target? Uh, which platform are we going to be? Because these questions and more are very important early early on because um, you know you want to know like do you have the capabilities to do it? Who do you want to find or hire to help you in your journey? Like what kind of development period that you can have for this uh, game? You know, like based on that, what kind of quality that you can achieve? Uh, what are the references or the games out there? So those are the things that you have to plan 
way early uh, and not something in the middle because um, this will affect a lot of things in your development. And then um, after you're done with that, only can you go into pre-production. So in the pre-production, you come up with like, what is the storyboard, the story of the uh, the game. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, your concept artist will draw some, you know, figures or uh, environments uh, for as the concept arts. And then you do some early prototyping. Um, you, you, um, you set your targets, your goals, uh, you set your milestones. And then you determine like what kind of game you're gonna uh, like the gameplay loop that you're gonna going to make, uh, and many more. Uh, so these are the pre-production stages. And then next, once you're done with that, you have a prototype, and your prototype is working fine. Uh, you move on to the next stage, which is the usually is the longest um, stage in the game development, which is the pr uh, production. So in production is where um, things happen. Um, you you create your assets. Uh, you create um, you know your characters. You do the three D model. You rig it. You animate it. Um, you you create um, VFX. Uh, you create sound effect. Um, you know for the programmers, they'll do like the physics, the mechanics, the game, uh, the gameplay uh, programming, and many more. So this is the one that usually will take a long time. So why pre pre production is important because any changes that you do in production most probably gonna cost you a lot. So if you, I wouldn't say that you will get it right <laughs> in the first time <laughs> because game development is not, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's quite, quite um, challenging. Uh, a lot of times it's actually um, problem solving. So sometimes you have like very cool idea, but when you try to do it, you cannot do it. So not, now you have to, you know, problem solve and try to find like a different ways to do it. Uh, and if that happens, um, if it's like a, you know, like early stage or like, it's something that is not that big. Uh, maybe it's not gonna affect your timeline or your budget too much. But then, if it is something that is already like you know late stage, or it is like a very big changes that you have to do, and if you did not plan it well early on, only realizing like you know I you know we should have actually used a different software, for example, then it's gonna cost you a lot. So that's why uh, you usually you don't go into pr production too early, um, you know, try to, to finish. But sometimes some some companies or some teams will, will have like pre-production and production um, kind of like staggered uh, depending on how they want to develop the product. Okay. Um, and then of course you'll do a, a lot of testing. So testing also happens during production nowadays. Uh, used to be you develop everything and then, you know, test towards the end and then you find like 1000 bucks. That you need to fix, but nowadays with um, a better pipeline, uh, you know, uh, in the software software world in general, this is not something new. But in game development, somehow we kind of like um, adopt this method a little bit later. So nowadays, um, nowadays we we do a lot of builds uh, all the time, and then we test it uh, as we go. So you you know every time we add. New things, new code, new asset. We we make a build, we test it, make sure everything is okay because it's easier to to fix like one thing that you know caused by you know this update instead of you know hundred or more than that you know from like different different updates because sometimes you don't know where does it come from, what affected. So um, one way to do it is to have like a a, a very uh, quick and fast pipeline that you can can do from you know like your uh, your uh, to, to create a build that you can test out immediately okay <laughs> huh? it, it, uh, uh. <laughs> okay okay all right so and then uh, you uh, once uh, after that you launch your game uh, so that's where uh, more headaches will come because previously you test like with your team or maybe like uh, your uh, like a small circle of people, but once you you do your launching, there'll be a lot more headache coming uh, and a lot of problems more to fix. Uh, and then after that is post production, of course. Uh, so uh, in game development nowadays, post production is actually, um, especially in mobile game, uh, so it is more taxing and more resource heavy than production because once the game is out people want updates fast right they want it now they don't want it like you know in production you can take your own sweet time but once you release the game you want to add more contents uh, more things in the game so post production become more important nowadays uh, in the in the newer uh, way of developing games 
So of course, uh, game pre preparation, you have to clarify details, make sure that everything is okay before you move on to the next one. What's this? Okay, so these are the, the, the things that you need to consider uh, when, when you are designing your game. Uh, the first, of, first is the design. Oh, there you go. So we, um, most probably you've heard of game design document. So some games, you know, simple games that you do, you don't need like very complicated, complicated game design document. But for games like what we are trying to do, which is a mobile game, is very complex. So we have, uh, I think, like 200 plus pages of design documents. Um, and this is not all. This is just like the basic gameplay mechanics, the UI design, the character and everything. Uh, the calculations, everything, we have like another separate, I guess, like if um, we add everything, probably close to 300 maybe pages. Um, because why we do this is because, uh, once we are, uh, we, you know, like we, we have this document, we can pass this to whoever is working on a specific things. For example, programmers. Um, yeah, you know, like what kind of parameters does character have? So we just pass the design document to them, and they don't have to figure out themselves. They they already know. Okay, what are the calculations? What are the damage? How do you calculate the damage? Right. So everything is inside this document. So for game the uh, game companies, uh, this is quite quite important uh, uh, document lah. Uh, and then we also have another separate uh, files for uh, characters, environment, uh, and then also the marketing stuff. Okay, uh, next one. Okay, then you have to also consider like what is your strong point. So our strong point is that we promote local culture. Uh, we want to make it as an esports game. Uh, we also want to collaborate with a lot of other peoples in the in the region uh, to help us like you know promote the region to the world uh, and many more. Okay. Next is um, also you have to consider your timeline. So this is also important because uh, it replaces with your budget as well. So ideally, you have like this period of time that you want to develop, but most of the time, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you probably will run like out of money or something by the time you, you know, if you do like the normal way. So sometimes we have to push things a little bit. Uh, we have to fasten it or, you know, like change a little bit take out certain uh, features in the game uh, kind of thing so that the product is, you know, you, 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 you can complete the product in time. So, yeah, so sometimes you have to, you know, uh, play around with the timeline, uh, make sure that you can get it uh, right. Uh, also, manpower is uh, very important in, in game development. Maybe not as much as animation industry, but um, still we, we, we require a lot of people, uh, especially working in uh, more complex uh, titles. So when we start the project, we only have about 23 people in the in Todak Studios. Um, but right now we have, I think now it's already close to 50 people uh, that we get because we have like multi, uh, you know, different departments, uh, different re requirements that we need. Uh, so we, we do hire uh, a lot more nowadays. And those uh, also, you know, is part of the budget that we have to consider the timeline, the manpower that we're going to use. Those are the part, uh, the things that we uh, we have to consider early on whether we can do this project or not. Uh, and then uh, this is, I'll, I'll just run through it very fast. Um, this is just an estimate of what kind of costs you associate with certain kind of games. Uh, of course, this is actually is it's not exactly like true. Sometimes it's not. Um, but this is a good idea of where. Um, the 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 I mean like the, the kind of budget that you are looking for, uh, so for indie kind of game is um, you know one million and below. Um, uh, for example, Fez um, is uh, the Fez budget is about five hundred thousand. Uh, it's kind of still considered indie. Uh, maybe in Malaysia, if like five hundred thousand USD is like what like two million is 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 a big amount. Uh, but when you consider a five-year uh, development timeline with the number of um, people working on it, uh, it, it is not that big uh, in the grand scheme of things. And then we have a double A AA or triple I. Uh, so this is like a, in the middle of indie and triple A can, uh, games. Uh, we have budget of between 1 million to 40 million. Uh, so Hellblade uh, is uh, budgeted at about 10 million ring, uh, sorry, USD, uh, team of 20 people and develop it in four years. And then lastly, we have the triple A. So the triple A is basically 10 million and, and like I can, it can reach like 200 or 300 million easily. So for example, we, uh, we have Witcher, uh, 81 million budget, 
240 people working on the game, uh, you know, not just in-house, they are outsourcing partners and everything. Uh, and it took them 3.5 years in development. Okay, uh, right. So next is, okay, that's 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 pretty much all the things that you, uh, I mean, not all, but some of the things that you need to consider in, in pre-production so that you know that you can do this project instead of, you know, it's going to make you bankrupt before before you <laughs> finish it. Uh, so then we go into into um, production. So production also is another headache that you have to think about. Uh, this is just, uh, for example, this is just um, a character um, pipeline. So um, in most cases, uh, or in some cases, you don't have this. You don't need this kind of um, complicated uh, pipeline. But uh, in, if you are doing like a uh, uh, more complex games or like maybe like a double A, triple A kind of games. Uh, you, you do need uh, to consider all this and some of them are done by different people so you have to communicate with them. Uh, in most of the stages, you need like QC so it will take time because you need to wait for that person, the other person to uh, check your work uh, before you move on. If, if not, you will get rejected and you just, you know, waste time. Uh, so game development does involve a lot of people uh, and I would say like um, not only from, you know, like game development specific fields, like, uh, you know, like programming or, you know, 3D modeling, but we also need people from like, you know, music for the marketing, for the, um, uh, like character animation or, and, and many more. And I'm going to skip this one as well. Uh, so in character development, for example, in, in our game, uh, we will have like a character pitch document. Uh, we start with that, like what kind of characters you want to make, uh, what kind of ability and, and like the, his, the the background story kind of thing. Um, and then we do the concept, 3D model. Next, after once we have the 3D model, we do the rigging animation. Uh, and then we add VFX, SFX, and then we will compile everything into the game. So these are done by different departments, by different peoples. So we have, um, you know, like our pipeline uh, for that. Okay, this, for example, is the the pitch uh, for the characters. So, for example, uh, our character is called Rakai. So this is based on uh, historical figures Ailanga from the in uh, kingdom in Bali area. So we have like the the history, the mission statement, and then also the three pillars. Like what kind of character does this embody? And this is some of the uh, concept art uh, document that we have for the characters. Okay, I think I'm, yeah, all better. Uh, and also now uh, about the software. Software is also another thing that, um, you know, a lot of um, things that we have to consider, like what are the software they want to use. So there are a lot of things to consider when you develop a game. Um, I would say that this is important, but not, you know, like, I mean, it's as long as it works for your project, uh, is good enough, even even though it's free, right? Um, so, uh, so even uh, we also use free software like Blender uh, and many more. Uh, as long as it works for your project, then it's okay. But you have to know that uh, when you you export, for example, files, it fits into the other software they are using. You know, like your pipeline, it makes sense, right? So you have to make sure that it's okay before you continue. Okay, so this is my last part of uh, presentation, my, the reflections and lesson learned. Um, you know, we are still in the production uh, stages, you know, remember that uh, earlier. Uh, so proper planning and pre-production is crucial, is definitely. Um, even with experience, um, we still get it wrong a lot of times. <laughs> uh, even now, like uh, last week, we had some certain things that we had to change. Uh, you know, it, it comes with game development. It's something that you learn along the way. Um, hopefully, you know, once you you are used to it, uh, it gets lesser. But uh, it's, it, you're still gonna <laughs> gonna gonna delay a lot. Even triple A games also face delays and and problems a lot. Um, but you know when if you do have like a proper planning it lessen the the impact that you will have uh, work towards a streamlined automated pipeline so make sure if as especially if you're working in the team make sure that everything works in this, on the same page for example the design document just now is a very good example like once you have that document everyone can see it everyone knows what they need to do kind of thing um so yeah and then last is 
appreciate and celebrate idea. So um, don't try to make a game based on only one person's idea, I would say, especially if you are in the team, right? Because sometimes when we do certain things, we are, uh, our vision is like, you have like a vision, uh, tunnel vision. Uh, we are so focused on certain things that we forgot about a lot of things or like we see things differently that, you know, maybe this is not something that the market wants. It's something that you want, definitely, but maybe not something that the market wants. So celebrate ideas, you know, some people will say something, uh, consider the ideas, uh, make sure that, you know, everyone is heard. Okay, I think that's, yeah, that's pretty much it in my presentation today. Hopefully you guys learned some things. Uh, so this is the social media, it's not my social media, it's the, the company's social media. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad Faris, for your enlightening presentation. Next, we would now like to invite Mr. Muhammad Rafiq, indie game developer, to be our next speaker. Give a round of applause for him. Thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum and good evening to everyone. Are you okay? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for. Uh, thank you. You need you my. You need me. You need my. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. You need my to invite me. Sorry, my English is not good, but I will mix with Malay. Okay. Okay. Uh, my name is Abdul Rafiq bin Abdullah. You can call me Rafiq. Uh, I am a solo game developer. So you are students. You may kamu akan mungkin consider lah uh, untuk menjadi solo developer. Okay. Ataupun you nak pergi sendiri. Okay. You mungkin boleh tengok saya punya sebagai inspirasi untuk you pergilah untuk you buat sebagai solo okay understand <laughs> okay so my slide is very simple uh, just my journey as a games developer okay okay so uh, this is my first income as a game developer okay uh, my game is more to mobile games uh, in gen general puzzles okay uh, okay so saya belajar di pertama diploma in computer science uh, in UMP and then I go to games development a uh, game technology in UTEM okay Right now, uh, I work as a uh, apps developer in Rambau, uh, Kedua Technology. At the same time, I work as a uh, part-time in the game developer. Okay. Okay. Good. So this is my games. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, around. 10 plus my games okay all this game uh, I developed by myself okay so the first one is teka simpulan bahasa okay teka silang kata is more in the Malay Malay games okay uh, I have a beberapa clients I have a clients okay first one is hard it it's about uh, serious games in uh, oops, serious game about heartbeat. Okay, okay. <laughs> so my first game I developed using Unreal is uh, LQ. This is my first game. It's about three D puzzle games. Okay, in two thousand eighteen, and then uh. 
I have a uh, clients that uh, he is my first. Okay, and then I start a uh, new brands. It's called Puzzle Malaysia. So this is my plan is from indie to my own studios. Okay. So in Puzzle Malaysia, I my first as a Puzzle Malaysia, <laughs> Puzzle Malaysia okay, is Teka Si Pulabasa and then Teka Emoji is like a guess, uh, the, guess the emoji, okay. So after that, uh, I develop games Teka, uh, teka Silang Kata and Teka Teki and then 2020, I develop games Jump and Swiss Colors and then last year I developed two games Max Jump and Teka Silang Kata Malaysia okay. okay this uh, actually uh, saya sebenarnya my, my target uh, mengumpul sebanyak satu juta database 1 million database users who love Puzzle Malaysia so when I have 1 million database users so I can sell anything about puzzle games okay including about games and other <laughs> yang berkaitan dengan puzzle game okay so this one is uh, my database I have the uh, the other database okay okay yang ini adalah yang apa orang yang suka puzzle lah saya dah dapat satu in my hand dalam tangan saya dah ada satu customers okay satu customers okay so I keep continue my ideas so the goal is to sell game, game puzzle okay Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Untuk menjadi seorang indie games, the paling critical adalah confirm lah, uh, duit. Okay. Money is important. So, saya buat, I do a training and consultants, mostly on game in game developments using Unity. Okay. Saya pun buat apa mobile apps punya trainings and consultant okay. saya baru lagi but tapi ini adalah salah satu cara untuk survive dalam dunia indie games okay. compare dengan uh, studios atau uh, studios and cool code dia, dia ada ramai yang dia ada budget and dia ada uh, team yang ramai okay. So, ini adalah salah satu lah untuk saya punya survive kat Malaysia, okay. Saya tak ada, I, I don't have any studios, okay. Saya, uh, I work for homes, I just need a laptop and internet, okay, to make a game. Okay. Understand? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is my plan for Puzzle Malaysia in upcoming 2000 now and 2000 okay, five years ahead so to get a 1 million in 10 years I need a what's called uh, to grow I need a funds and partnership okay okay Saya tak pernah apply any any tak tak pernah apply mana-mana grants so semua pakai my own pakai saya punya fund sendiri so bila saya dah ready baru saya akan pitch kepada mereka untuk mencari funds okey so agak susah sebenarnya bergerak solo tapi as long you apa selagi kita bergerak tiga ada progress dia cukup baik sebenarnya Okay, so setiap hari kena ada progress. So, uh, saya, oh lupa nak beritahu, saya kan kerja sebagai app developer di Kudoh Technology. So, 
So apa orang panggil Kena bagikan masa dengan betul lah So pagi saya kerja, hari malam saya double games Okay Susah sikit nak 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 survive Okay Sebab kita tak ada fun Okay Tapi saya suka cara macam ni sebab Dia Mengubah saya dari seorang yang Pemalu Kepada Yang baik lah Yang sekarang ada Okay Say. Okay Kamu semua okay Okay <laughs> Boleh eh okay. So now my Kes Uh, my database uh, customers around seratus ribu lah macam tu okay. so kalau saya jual physical product kalau satu, kalau saya dapat satu juta database okay. kalau saya jual sepuluh persen daripada satu juta kalau saya jual physical product tu adalah sepuluh ringgit mungkin berapa kali lah dengan sepuluh persen satu juta sepuluh persen kali. Okey, mungkin saya akan dapat 100 ribu. Okey, itu. Okey. Betul. Okey. Ah, uh, apa yang banyak saya boleh katakan, uh, kalau sesiapa yang nak bekerja kat studio, masa tu boleh buat portfolio dulu. Biasanya sebelum masuk ke studio ataupun nak pergi mana-mana kena buat satu portfolio yang mantap untuk Okey. Tapi kalau tak nak boleh follow saya punya ni tapi agak struggle lah sikit. You kena bekerja saya rasa 10 kali ganda. Okey. Uh, saya ada saya punya impian dan goals. That's why I go saya tak bekerja dengan any saya bekerja. Saya bekerja dengan saya bekerja dengan orang tapi saya punya vision saya tak berkongsi dengan orang macam itulah. Uh, so okey sorry kamu okey <laughs> right so saya pun tak nak ambil masa yang lama sebab uh, lepas ni kita ada kamu boleh tanya saya macam mana saya survive lebih macam mana saya bergerak solo okey okey terima kasih itu saja <laughs> okey Thank you Mr. Muhammad Rafiq for your intriguing first presentation. Next, please allow me to invite our next speaker, Dr. Johanita Jiman, our senior lecturer at Unimai, a distinguished academic in Malaysian creative multimedia with a PhD in Arts and Design. Please welcome our fifth speaker. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and very good evening to everybody. I guess some of you probably know me. Yeah, you're from Unimai, right? Some of you? Yes, okay. So thank you for being here and for supporting me. And I'm very sure that um, you are very um, actually uh, overwhelmed with the speakers before me. And um, because of I'm an educator or academician, uh, my experience in games probably not as, um, uh, what do you call it, as huge as what I have seen earlier, uh, where your speakers have shown many things that actually scared me, <laughs> okay? So, um, well, um, we are Unimai, we are in Unimai, uh, we are in a VAC and um, we have a very good, uh, what do you call it, uh, environment here where we have students who are very uh, enthusiastic in, um, you know, doing game uh, design, okay. Um, Okay, the t uh, title today is the Unlocking the Secret of Games. So the uh, secret of games was actually unlocked by our speakers earlier. So what I'm going to unlock now is actually the journey of being a game developer and designer. 
okay, academic side. So when you are exposed to whatever the real game uh, world is, now I'm going to bring you back to Unimai or to wherever you are when you are studying the game, uh, what do you call it, uh, game uh, program, okay? So I've started my journey um, as a graphic design student when I was doing my degree in New Zealand. I came back and um, I uh, further my study to do my master's in the States. Uh, I did computer animation, and then I finished up my PhD in UITM in local content in animation. So basically when you ask me, uh, why are you teaching game? Okay, game de uh, design and um, creative multimedia are actually very interconnected. Okay, you when you do games, you don't only do games. You have to learn a lot of things behind the game. You have to learn the artistic, artistic side. You have to learn many other things like uh, the management part. You have to learn um, Photoshop. You have to learn other things. And uh, when I go, um, you know, my research area before, you know, I don't look at this, I just talk to you, right? But uh, if you look at my research area also, I have done interactive 3D storytelling. This is in a group. I'm not, I was not the leader, but I was in the team and we produced the storytelling engine. That time, um, the interactive 3D storytelling was not as big. It was in early 2002. So it's like uh, 22 years ago. Okay, and it was a preliminary uh, work. And then after that, um, I did uh, 3D character animation as a virtual instructor and a motivation factor for e-learning. So I created the avatar, okay, for that. And then, uh, but I didn't get to do the whole thing. So I did the preliminary research and I presented a paper about that, all right? Okay. Um, so uh, talking about academic, I was appointed that time in 2002 to 2007, it was under a special invitation. So you don't have to apply. I received a letter saying that you're appointed as a panel member for the LAN. Uh, that time it was called LAN as Lembaga Akreditasi Negara. Okay, and then uh, 2007, it was changed to MQA, Malaysian Qualification Agency. So actually, my involvement with academic uh, accreditation is from 2002 to 2000, uh, to current. Yeah, so it's 20 over years already with MQA, right? And then uh, in 2006, 2007, I was involved with the Ministry of Education uh, doing curriculum development for animation uh, for uh, Sijil Kemahira Malaysia Vocational School, right? And then um, I have also um, uh, give the, not really me give the accreditation, sorry for that, but I was involved in the accreditation, uh, accreditation process for um, four uh, game design programs. One is Bachelor of Arts Honours in Game Design for, uh, for UCSI. Yeah, Diploma in Immersive Design, College Atarabangsa Inti, which involves game also in there. And then Bachelor in Multimedia Honours, Lim Kok Wing Game Design and then Bachelor of Animation Design with Game Art for UNITAR. So basically, even though I wasn't really involved with animation, but with, as I said earlier, because it is interconnected with creative multimedia, so hence I uh, did the accreditation process for these uh, four programs. All right, and then um, I forget about this. Okay, I just skip, skip this. Okay, so here we are, where you are now. We are in uh, BAC, um, um, BAC Tower in Petaling Jaya. Okay, here are our facilities. You know, some people ask, uh, what is bacteria? It sounds quite scary, isn't it? <laughs> but it's BAC cafeteria, so it's called bacteria. <laughs> so don't be scared to eat there, okay? So it's safe. All right, and here are the things that we have. We have uh, Green Studio and we have um, other things in our uh, Okay, so um, Unimai has got its uh, FA or full accreditation in Diploma in Game Development, or DGD. And uh, because of that, our students have uh, been involved with a lot of um, game uh, eSports, especially um, along the years and starting from 
I believe, uh, because I just joined Unimas two years ago, but even before I came, they already involved in esports. Yeah, so we actually have, um, you know, gained a lot of awards for that. Okay, so what we have here, yeah, Diploma in Game Development or DGD. And then we have a pathway where the students would go for Bachelor in Game Development. So uh, a game technology. So uh, DGD is basically this, uh, where the students start to learn, you know, the basic thing about a game development. But then when they move to a uh, game uh, development in game technology, when they do their bachelor's degree, the students would actually do more on the technology skill side. They would actually go for more, um, you know, programming and stuff like that. So uh, talking as an educator or as an academic person. Yeah, who's involved with uh, MQA. Um, you know, I think when you mention about MQA, a lot of people got scared. They were saying that, you know, why is it there? Why do you have to follow MQF? Why do you have this uh, to follow these 10 uh, domains? Yeah, uh, and a lot of students um, say that, you know, why do you have to do uh, interpersonal skills? Why do you have to do com uh, communication skills? Yeah, and as a student, probably you don't really see far ahead. Yeah, you think that, okay, I want to be a game developer. I want to be a game designer. I don't want to do all this. Correct not? Some of you think it's a waste of time learning moral, learning other things. But what um, the Malaysian Qualification Framework do is actually to help students to be a whole uh, per a holistic person who have this uh, human capital quality, who have everything. You know, you don't only can develop game. Yeah, you don't only go out and graduate and be a game developer or designer. In the same time, you probably can give back to your community. Yeah, um, you know, and as a game developer, also a game designer, for example, you have to work in team. You don't work in silo. Even though you are an indie, uh, what you call it, program developer or designer, you still have to work with your clients. You know, you don't work alone, you know, even though you see I work alone, not really alone. You are not alone in this world. We have to communicate. And that's why these 10 things that you learn under MQF is very, very beneficial for everybody. Yeah. OK, so um, that's, you know, my uh, you know, nagging about those things. But I actually would like to tell you that your journey not only is here and it stops here. This is only your beginning, your diploma, your degree, and later on you will continue. And all the skills you learn here is for you to develop. You know, you are not going to be spoon fed anymore. We are here as educators to help you to go through. We will support you. You know, and but you are the one who will actually, uh, you know, make your own path. You go your own way. You know, like uh, Mr. Rafik here. He's very brave. You know, he's you know he's doing things on his own. Toda. You know, and cool codes. You know, those people that you know, a lot of students don't really see what they are going to be when they go out. And this is a, the moment where you learn. You know, open your eyes and see whatever that your seniors have ex actually. Uh, achieved and you can be like that or maybe you can be better yeah okay all right so uh, when you take this uh, programs the dgd or bgt yeah not only in unimai but anywhere else also you can be a game developer you can be level designer because in game you know you need this all these people are different different levels and that's why you don't work alone you work in a team where everybody has their own part because, you know, if an indie person like uh, Mr. Rafik, of course, he has to do everything. And it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy. But if you go out and you want to work, right, you have to have uh, the talents that, like uh, Mr. Ivan said before, right, he said that you have to be a master of everything, but uh, no, uh, you know everything but master of one. Okay, it's like that. You go out with a lot of things in your hand, but then when you go and work, it's specialized already. They probably hire you as a uh, character designer or level designer like that. You don't do everything unless you work alone like Mr. Rafi. Okay, so uh, another is uh, asset artist, game programmer, game, game tester, technical artist, game designer, animator. So all this you can be, you know, it's not impossible, right? 
Okay. So uh, how we do it in Unimai? Uh, we don't actually let the students alone and the lecturer because of we believe that interactivity, we believe that the students should be exposed to other things rather than only, you know, within the classroom. The students should learn more than that. So that's why we include industry in the classroom. We probably can invite Toda, we can invite Cool Code, we can invite Mr. Rafiq to give talk to our students. Rather than our students go out, we bring them to our classroom. Right, and then uh, our lecture also uh, uh, go for train the trainers for a robot simulation, and then SCP championship. Apart from this, um, the industry into the classroom, we also bring our students outside where we have field trips, and they also have uh, internship where they actually expose to the real world of uh, you know working environment. Right. Okay, so these are the things that uh, Unimai has uh, involved. Okay, uh, it's uh, 2021, Unimai Esports, uh, Mobile Legend Bang Bang Unimai 2020, Unimai Cyber Game 2022, Penang Esports Championship in 2022, Malacca All-Star Esports Challenge in 2022, and Unimai Valorant Tournament in last year in 2023. So we are quite uh, active in that. Okay, so we have partners in our game design, um, you know, uh, program. We have Cool Code. Mm, where's Mr. Rizwan? Okay, <laughs> he was here before, Cool Code. And uh, Unity, Cuba Lab, and Cat Gear. So these are our partners. Okay, that's it. Uh, I hope I, I don't bore you with whatever you know I have said earlier. So uh, I'm actually very uh, fortunate and happy today to be part of the uh, tech talk. All right. So uh, we'll see you again during the Q and A. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Johanita, for your educational presentation. Next on our agenda, I would like to invite Mr. Timothy Chan, Head of Academics at IACT, to share more about the International Advertising Communication and Technology College, or better known as IACT College. Please welcome Mr. Timothy Chan. Hello. So I'll make it fast because it's uh, late afternoon and I think uh, most of us are a little bit tired. I don't have slides, so to make life easy for everyone. Um, basically, uh, we, we are signing a, a, a MOU with, with Unimai uh, later today at the end of this session. Basically, what we are covering will be ICD College is one of uh, Malaysia's premier uh, creative colleges and we've been around since 1970. So basically what we have done is we take the, we are taking we are blending the expertise of the creative elements within ICT and embedding it together with Unimai in creating uh, an overall uh, experience for the students, enabling them to be, as what uh, our speakers have mentioned, like Ivan has mentioned, that you be jack of all trades, but you can be a master of one or two. So we're moving towards uh, the ability of being a polymath within the Malaysian society. Now, uh, Mr. Raja Sigam has mentioned it uh, previously in, in other of his uh, comments, whereby if we look into the world today, one of the major issues is that there's no one is a single-minded person and no one is one. Right, uh, is your your skill sets that you learn today is no longer applicable uh, for a lifelong. Right, uh, in the past, your parents may have worked in uh, in one industry and they've probably retired in one industry. But now, the overall listing of uh, any any job or any expertise, uh, it can be it can be changed, uh, it can be adapted, or it can even disappear within uh, a, a span of five, ten years. Uh, look, looking at you know how successful in my generation uh, something called Friendster was uh, for the older people will know Friendster MySpace and it has virtually disappeared and you know for your generation you probably have spoken to us and say oh yeah oh my god you're still using Facebook oh my god that's so 
last millennium. Uh, now you're going to, oh yeah, Instagram, oh yeah, I mean Instagram, uh, sir, Instagram, uh, no no one use Instagram now, we're going to TikTok. So in three years down the road, it may be TikTok already, or it may be Kaka already, I'm not sure, but you know, we will see where it comes from there. But if you look into the whole situation like that, right, we need to really understand that uh, whatever that you learn today could be obsolete tomorrow. Now, two years ago, or actually, Technically, one year ago, uh, AI was just oh yeah something in the in the future and and look you know ChatGPT within a few uh, months of it being launched uh, you know has already sort of disrupted the entire industry so we're looking into the disruption of uh, an entire industry in itself so if you look at the skill set that you learn today whatever that you learn in university uh, upon your graduation will probably be obsolete within the next three to four years and the programs that you use will have second version third version fourth versions or whatsoever or that adapted in that sense even your mobile phones uh, when mobile phones were still originally around uh, mobile phones uh, nokia one phone, three, four years before a new module comes out. Now I blink of an eye, there's a new iPhone. Uh, I can't keep track. I don't know what's the latest iPhone actually. Uh, but to be fair, I want to make a disclaimer first. I'm not an iPhone user. Sorry, iPhone. I'm, I'm a advocate to Android. Yay. Uh, yay, 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 yay. <laughs> uh, hey. uh, see, uh, the creative lecturers are giving me that like, um, so yeah. Uh, basically, what we're saying is, uh, you know, what we are explaining is, you, every one of you, regardless of who you are, you need to be a polymorph no matter what field you are. Now, for those of you who say, what is polymorph? Uh? Polymorph is uh, literally someone that has multifaceted and multi skill set. You learn, you are learned as much as you want, and you have the ability to adapt and change in according to your environment. So, uh, our collaboration Unimai is to enable the Unimai students to have the best of both worlds, the technical expertise and the IT expertise from University Malaysia, and as well as for IACT, what we are famous for, what we are good at, which is the creative and artistic elements. Now, the best games in the world, if you have the best storyline, but you have crappy artwork, no one will want it. Right. Uh, even Mario had to have a facelift, right? Uh, from a 2D to a 3D to now Mario. I, I've seen a version of Mario with, with that is buffed up. I'm not quite sure if that relates, but if you're looking at the world today, graphic is the main element. We are stimulated by graphics. We are stimulated by visual elements. Uh, you're on your phone on TikTok most of the time. For those of you who are already on TikTok now, currently as well, TikTok is a content. We are looking at short contents. We are looking at uh, animated content. Those are contents that is created. Now, being IACT, we are famous for content creation and we create these contents for you. We create these contents. We, 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 we develop these contents in order to engage you short term, long term uh, for brands, you know, for commercial purposes to sell you something right uh, in the best in the best acronym that's possible. Uh, one of the few things that uh, I do actually a master class in how to find a girlfriend. Uh, no, 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 no. Now, study all regularly how to find a girlfriend, right? Uh, but what how a girlfriend? Basically, every game, every product, every material, uh, every anything that you're developing and you're trying to sell to the public, you are a boy looking for a girlfriend. That's the simplest way to see. I see the girl, that is the target audience, the target market I want to sell the product to. I now have to dress myself, speak the right language, say the right things. She likes roses. I don't give her chrysanthemum. Uh, to be fair, please don't give any girl chrysanthemum, especially in Malaysia. That is only for the... Okay, if you give her chrysanthemum, you are probably going to get into trouble. Um, but basically, when you look into that, you need to know your audience. You need to know what your audience wants, what, what incites your audience, what makes her interested in you, right? Uh, some girls, you want, I want to date her. I might take her to the mama store. She said, oh my God, it's so cheap. You take me to a mama store. Oh my goodness. Where's the fine dining? Then I go to the fine dining because of my, uh, my short-sightedness and uh, me getting old. I need to use my phone torchlight to see the food and the plate is so big and the food is so small and look at my size, there is just not enough food for me to eat anyways. So we need to target a game for a purpose, right? We talked about your games previously to talk about how do we educate children in that sense, right? Uh, when I was doing communications, when I was an undergrad in your shoes and I go home, uh, my, my parents were scringe, like what Ivan said, oh my God, you're not gonna be an engineer, doctor, oh no. Mass communication, what the heck is that? And we went into that field and when I sat down, one of my assignments I remember very clearly in college, one of my assignments is to sit down on and watch one TV channel for 12 hours straight. 
And I sat down and I watched TV3 for 12 hours straight. And my dad came home and said, I thought you're doing your assignment. I am doing my assignment. What the heck you're doing in front of the TV? I am doing my assignment. So my parents couldn't brain what I was braining, right? What I was doing at that time. So if you look into uh, that particular perspective or whatever that we do, we need to be able to adapt to the particular industry. We need to be able to relearn, unlearn uh, any skill sets, any programs. And the availability of any college institution or the best universities in the world will come to the same point. You are never a hundred percent equipped at the end of your uh, education career. That is, I think all employers here will agree. It is your ability to adapt, is your ability to change, is ability to learn, unlearn, relearn, and upskill yourself. So part and parcel of us here within this entire collaboration is to allow the ability for you to create uh, materials push you into the limits of how can you think about or consider a creative pathway on top of the programming pathway within the game development spectrum because we think we or we feel I know you I'm sure the game uh, the the gaming experts here will understand or, or agree with me that by the importance is also how good the game looks visually because the audience today similar to you we are very fickle minded we are very intense we want things immediately we want gratification that what the game gives us we gives us a challenge we learn uh, for younger audiences it's about your psychomotor skills even in terms of that coordination but on top of all these things the important thing is visual stimuli that we uh, at ICT uh, is very very excited to collaborate with Unimai into moving forward uh, to creating better game developers for the Malaysian community one of the hope that I have is I myself is a gamer but I'm more of an RTS gamer right uh i really hope that one day we will we can call you know right in malaysia we have one great game or at least starting with one great game that is you know running through around the world and we can proudly say that this was a malaysian game so with that hopefully i did not bore you too much a little bit but sorry old man you like that but thank you very much and uh, i hope you enjoy the rest of the day thank you Thank you, Mr. Timothy. Um, if I would, uh, sorry, Mr. Timothy, if you can please remain on the stage for the MOU signing session. And we would also like to invite Professor Dr. Technologist Salwani Binti Mama Daud to join Mr. Timothy to officiate the memorandum of uh, understanding between Unimai and IACT. Also, I would like to invite Mr. Tilay Raj, Chief Technology Officer, BAC Education Group, and lastly, Ms. Shuhada, Dean of School Creative Multimedia, Unimai. Okay, please pose. Our photographer is in the middle. Okay, can we invite uh, all of the five speakers to come up to the front for photography session? Uh oh. <laughs> Please stay tuned. Yeah, after this, we will have QA session. So Stand by your question. Uh, 
Thank you so much for the speakers and VIPs. This marked the starting point of the collaboration of UNIMI and IACT. Next, I would like to invite Mr. Tilai, Chief Technology Officer of BAC Education Group, to deliver a short presentation. The floor is yours. Okay, good evening. So I'm not going to bore you, just a few slides before we start the Q&A session. I think you'd like to hear from them than from me. But I want to share a few things which I thought was very important to understand about skills. Okay, I, I graduated you know, many, many years ago, worked in the US, worked in Florida, worked on the first, uh, on what you call StarTech. There was a foldable phone by Motorola. So I used to work many, many years ago. I don't think it's no more there now. Uh, so we got killed by Mr. Nokia and then Mr. Apple after that, you know. So, so quickly, can I get into my slides? Uh, yeah, so I just can talk about skills quickly. Why, what, what's happening with skills today? Uh, like Timothy mentioned, it's got to be a polymer. But if you look at it today, uh, you can see this. You know, in, 19, in the 1800s, we thought it could be, uh, example, a uh, horse carriage driver forever. And there could be generations of it. And then suddenly something came, a taxi came about and then replaced the horse carriages. And then suddenly there was something called Grab, Uber coming about. And then in a few years' time, you're going to see that even these guys are gone because they're going to be autonomous cars happening on the roads. So if you don't reinvent yourself, you're going to be in trouble. So this slide is trying to show that if you don't reinvent your skills, you're going to move. And if you look forward at some of the data which I got from the World Economic Forum, the half-life of skill, for example, if you graduate today and within in uh, 2017, the half-life means, for example, your skill was worth, say, 10,000 ringgit. And within a five-year span, five years in 2017, your skills will be worth half of it. So 10,000 becomes 5,000. By the year 2030, it's going to be two and a half years. So you can imagine within two and a half years, your skills are obsolete, almost obsolete. So you can imagine. So why, what's important is that we need to keep reinventing ourselves. So one of the things which I always like to talk to students about is, you know, you need to always look at two things. See, when I graduated as an engineer, a software engineer, uh, I, I was working software for 30 years. But now I reinvent and become a CTO of an education institution. Okay, so so two important things. There are a lot of points here, but I think the two important things you need to look at is first thing is networking, network with people coming for functions like this, talking to the experts, you know, from the various uh, gaming industry. That's important. But the other ones be a lifelong learner, because you got to keep learning new skills. If you don't learn that, you're going to become obsolete. So there's no no way about it. Just got to do it. And quickly, just to move forward, uh, you could see this is a data I got from Coursera. And to pick up a skill now is very fast. You know, we, we have Coursera for all our students today, and you could pick up a new skill within months. No more years and uh, years and you know decades to do it. It's within months. So skills are happening now very fast. I think the someone mentioned this now. I think cool code, right? You develop a software in 36 hours. That was like 36 months or 36 hours. It would take, you know, so you can imagine there was like tremendous amount of speed. So we need to really pick up things and move forward. And if you look at it quickly. Look at some of the jobs which are changing. You look at the jobs up there because of AI and automation and data analytics, you can see some of the new jobs coming about AI, machine learning, sustainable specialists. Who heard of the word sustainable? I didn't know, didn't know how to spell it when I, was a when I was a student, I think sustainable. Sustainable specialists, BI analysts, information security, blah, blah, a whole bunch of things. And these are jobs that are going away. So you can see things are really moving very, very fast. So we'll cover this a little bit of this in the Q&A session. I'm trying to prompt these speakers to look at it. How do we actually get the students to be a lifelong learner? That's one part of it, because I think your skills keep evolving all the time. And if you look at it today, in terms due to digitization today, if you look at it, 43% uh, of our job will be done by machines. This is the data from the, from the World Economic Forum. In 2027, almost half our jobs are done by machines. So what do we do? So we need to reinvent ourselves. So anyway, that's all I have. I'd like to invite the speakers to the stage and then we can keep all the questions ready. You know, uh, don't ask me questions, ask them questions. They're the experts in the gaming area. So thank you very much. Uh, like all of you to come to the stage and let's start the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Can you get a wireless mic? For Yeah. <laughs> 
Good evening. Okay, so I'm going to start with doing this session, but I'd like you guys to ask questions. So, me asking them questions to be more like you guys are very good, but let me start off. Let me talk to you. But let me ask them to go in on the day. I just saw my slides about the half life, about careers and skills. So, I just want to get a feeling for everybody here. You've got an independent person, you've got an educator, you've got a doctor person. This is a difficult question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how, how do we overcome the, the fact that our skills are going to be obsolete in like in in a very short period of time? Uh, I think it's the, the easiest way I can say is to, to develop a sense of uh, curiosity. Uh. Um, some of, some people have this innate thing that they want to they see something they want to try it out. Uh, I think most creators for games especially we actually start out that way where we play a game and then uh, in the back of our heads it it will be cooler if I could do this my way you know or I, like maybe like for myself i read a comic and I was like oh it might be cool to have my own kind of character in this story so most of us uh start our path with that kind of ideas um <laughs> back in uh, primary school i used to i used to basically copyright infringe doraemon <laughs> basically in uh we used to use our textbooks right uh the notebook we would draw our own doraemon stories because uh, yeah, back then we learned DM through Doraemon, right? So uh, for those of you that don't know, Doraemon is a Japanese manga, right? So we, I read the comics and then I thought, oh, maybe you can come up with your own stories. So from, from there, I started learning how to draw and start, start learning how to do text bubbles. The stories are horrible, like you look at it, but it was more of the, the idea that, that uh, I was curious enough to like, learn some new skills because I want to recreate something that I love and enjoy. Same thing for board games, uh, video games. We play so much, we consume so much. So uh, at some point, we all, some of us might choose this path because we want to create uh, new things of our own, with our own image in it. Yeah. So that's where I think uh, the constant drive to learn new things would be able to keep us one step ahead of the curve. Uh. <clears throat> so I think nowadays it's much easier to, to learn about new things. Uh, as mentioned previously, we have like a lot of online content, right? Um, Coursera, YouTube, uh, you know, maybe like a few years back, five, six years back. Um, what I did was that I joined a lot of um, conferences, game events to learn about new things, right? Uh, because uh, during that, those events, there'll be someone is doing something cool somewhere. And they, they want to share it, right? Uh, so that's how you keep up to date and on, on what are the new latest technologies, what are the people are doing. Uh, and at the same time, as a game developer, most of the time you are working in a desk or like maybe alone, maybe, uh, or in a team, like in the same building, uh, indoors all the time. And sometimes it, get, it gets boring. So another um, good thing about joining like events as well is that you get to mingle with other people. I know like most of the game developers are... Uh, introverts but um, I, I am as well but uh, you know once you, you start uh, creating your network you make friends it, it will be much easier as you go on and you get to share um, your experience your uh, knowledge with each other as well so uh, events are one of the things that uh, definitely one uh, place that you can go to to learn new stuff as well as you know keep your mind sane lah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then also now nowadays, you know, YouTube have a lot of contents that you can learn, uh, definitely. Okay. Um, can you repeat the question because I'm quite lost in you know in the middle of the. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that 
uh, when you are in school, when you are at a uh, university in the college or something, um, you're that not there. Your life is not ending there. It's the first stage actually for you to uh, do your lifelong learning because after you finish your course, probably in Unimai or in IACT in BAC, you have a lot of things going to happen ahead of you. So there's nothing constant in life except for change. Right. So everything, every time things change, you learn uh, the Unreal uh, Engine, you learn Unity Engine, but then maybe in, um, I don't know, maybe next year things change. No more uh, Unity, no more Unreal. Like when I first started with Maya, was Maya and Soft Image. These two companies were like, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, they are competitors, but now Soft Image is already gone. Now Maya is bought over by uh, 3D Studio Max and they are all under the same company. So things change without you knowing it. Yeah. So the students have to know that when they come out from school, you know, what you have learned uh, back then in college is your experience on how to adapt to the next life. Not next life means that, you know, if you're gone, but, you know, the things that you face in the future. You know, you learn like when people uh, in Malay, there's a uh, things that you say that uh, if you give a fish to a man, it will feed him for one day. If you teach the man to fish, it will help him throughout his life. So that's what the educators should do. The academic should do. We give you the knowledge. We have you the skills to adapt to the future, not to use and stop there because you have to like, you know, uh, I don't know who said that, you know, do you have to uh, upskill, reskill, you know, you have to learn, unlearn, relearn, all those things. So, you know, everything you have to adapt. So that's lifelong learning. That's why it's also in MQF, you know, part of it. Um, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Melaka, okay. Oh, so, uh, boleh saya cukup bahasa Melayu lah? Jauh, okay. Okay, uh, macam mana saya bekerja eh? Bekerja, ya yeah, betul. Uh, Umur kita makin tua, okay. so energi mungkin bukan berkurang So teknologi sesuatu berubah dan kita terpaksa mengikut pendalaman peredaran zaman eh, teknologi tu So Strategi saya adalah macam mana eh? Pertama adalah goal yang saya cakap tadi, vision So saya target mendapatkan satu juta uh, database dalam masa 10 tahun So kalau saya ada database tu Apapun teknologi pun saya datang, saya masih ada customer, loyal customer. Okay, so uh, untuk jadi indie, uh, ya dalam bidang game saya okay, saya boleh buat. Tapi dalam bidang entrepreneur, so maksudnya convert games tu kepada uh, duit. Okay, sekarang saya dapat duit eh, daripada, daripada game-game saya tu, eh, panggil passive income. So uh, saya dapat passive income, income daripada game saya. Okay, saya lupa nak beritahu saya ada passive income. Sama je, konsep sama macam YouTube. So when, bila orang main game, dia tengok iklan dan saya akan dapat duit. So sekarang ni pun, keep, selama lima tahun saya tak, tak kerja pun ada duit. Okay, so yes, passive, passive income. So teknologi apa pun yang datang, yang pertama adalah loyal customer tu. So saya kena pegang loyal customer tu. Uh, datanglah ER ke apa, tapi still puzzle dalam bidang puzzle, okay? saya memang target puzzle saja sebab dalam uh, yang tadi event eh, tunjukkan adalah mobile games kan betul, mobile game paling ramai yang main games so uh, puzzle ada antara, antara genre yang paling popular dalam mobile so saya bukan tak risau pasal teknologi tapi selagi saya ada Dari customer dan saya punya goals, apapun uh, Itulah saya punya strategi pertama, okay Okay Yes Okay, okay
Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So what I got to say is basically work hard, work smart. And of course, you all you can see is the 36 hours of making games happen, but you don't see 36,000 hours spending into making development and fail, fail, fail until you become a success. That is what you can't see. <laughs> okay. So it's basically uh, when I'm doing a game, so uh, even for designs, let's say making design, clients always fussy about, oh, these designs only take about uh, two or three hours to design. And then tell the client, go design themselves. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's not about uh, the, the, the how hard or how easy it is. It's basically an expertise skill, uh, a really valuable skills that you, you have a value to sell. Okay, so nowadays, the, Oh, I become a superhuman. Okay, all right. So nowadays, yeah, with the emerging of uh, artificial intelligence, it makes things easier, right? But it also needs a skill. So in order you to uh, to have a really good design, have a really good, let's say, even games nowadays, if built on a codeless platform, okay, so it are built uh, based on prompts. Okay, but you have to learn the skill how to prompt, how to the, the iteration uh, need to be done in order to get what you want, uh, to, to generate a result that you prefer it to be. So these are the process. So you need to trust the process basically. Okay, so in order, uh, the, the secret is, there's, there's not much as a secret. It's basically work hard, work smart. And if you want to go in line with the technology, uh, so this is uh, the challenges that are going on for years and years, okay? So that is hard about technologies. They are always moving really fast. So what you need to do is basically blend in with the communities, okay? So Facebook groups, uh, events, even this kind of events. So you're talking to me, you're talking to the other panels to learn new things, okay? So go to events, uh, go to even uh, any kind of booth, uh, special booth, universities, even travel outside. If you see the other nations are doing, uh, you can replicate and innovate, okay? So even for grabs and Uber, it's the same thing. It's a he he handling services. So same market, it's too big of a market. Uh, so how are you gonna niche it into yours, your business? So your values, you need to place your values well, okay? So. Uh, my point is really work hard, work smart, try to explore new things. Uh, nothing is uh, it's a lifelong learning, like Dr. Joannisa said. So it's a lifelong learning. So you, you have to keep on learning. All right. Thank you. Another question I have is about, since you're all here, what's the talent in Malaysia? I mean, Jokola, Kuhu, Kuhu, and then you come back to so yes, you don't mind having any programs or anything you see. Okay, so that is where we come up with a apprentice program. Okay, so a normal internship is will be like uh, you intern and then we give you some pointers and uh, you develop something. Okay, so we give you some hints. But apprentice program that we build is basically you are in line with a real team and also a real clients. Okay, so that is where we learn because uh, days back we are all students. So all the founders, all the managers, even me myself. So we are small students. We learn how to deal with client. We deal how to develop a software. Okay. So for for these kids, they have the they have access to us. We're not so hierarchical. Uh, a big company. You have you have to go through, send a paper, send a approval form or anything. Need some guidance to have a session one or hour, one or two hour booking sessions. 
Uh, so they have access to us. So they can always ask us questions. Okay, so we, we mentor them in apprentice program. So we give up some, some uh, little tasks, a little bit testing, testing, testing program. So they need to have a little bit fundamental, uh, fundamental skills, programming or even designs. Uh, and then we develop that skills. Uh, I mean, in a daily basis. So they have, they got to go through scrums. Uh, they have to get to go through uh, sprint, sprint tests. Also, so in a period, short period of time, they have to make a product. They have to pitch themselves, the products itself. So it's not just how you develop it, but how to sell it. Uh, Okay, so um, in terms of talent, right, I would say Malaysia, depending on like what kind of graduates you are, Malaysia's graduates are pretty high, I would say, kind of high talented, highly talented. Uh, if not, then because in Malaysia, right, um, is we used to be well known for producing uh, all sorts of things, right? uh, especially for art, because like uh, art and animation, uh, meaning that. People from around, around the world, big, big, big companies around the world um, are acknowledging the, the, the talent of Malaysians. Uh, but uh, I think there is a little bit more way to go for the technical part, uh, technical uh, part. But uh, it's not that far because we are, you know, we're going there, right? Um, our level of um, competencies are getting higher and higher. Uh, and hopefully, you know, within the next two, three years, we can see people, you know, graduates who can, you know, immediately jump into the industry and we are uh, really start working in uh, 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 But uh, I would say, you know, the, the most important thing is that uh, everyone needs to understand that, uh, you know, on top of whatever that you are learning at school, uh, you also need to develop your own skills uh, because those are the things that will help you. Uh, benefit you more because you know specific skills are very very important, especially in the industry. Because um, we, of course, we, we learn people who we learn a lot of things, but we also learn people who uh, specialize in the more. Government has a lot of different factors actually. All these uh, are yeah. Malaysian brain drain, all Malaysians brain Singapore, or the world, and so on and so forth. But I think uh, one, one thing I, I, I do like about this uh, partnership between uh, Unimai and the RACP is that one thing I found is uh, universities, there's so many universities offering a program, right? and some universities are uh, offering very general courses where you learn everything, uh, but like 30% of everything. There's a little bit of design, a little bit of programming, a little bit of art. Uh, when it comes to the work, actually, you're 30% or something. People don't hire, people definitely don't hire a programmer who can also do concept art. They want to hire a very good programmer, right? Yes. Or people don't want to hire an artist who can also speak on the side, not, not really, right? Uh, so they want to hire a very good artist, right? So, in this sense, like, even in the faculty, the fact that any strength is in IT, right? And uh, IT strength is in creativity and the visual side, really, I think it's a very good partnership. Huh? Where different faculties uh, work together to produce uh, higher quality graduates. And so, for that, I'm very impressed by this initiative. This question is specific for Ivan because uh, I saw this slide from, uh, I think, from both Coco and Tobal, I think, about the whole extent that how you can see the way you do. Whenever young people here, they want to become entrepreneurs or become EVs, like the lawyers, etc. Funding is an issue, right? So, yeah, funding, I would say funding in terms of like triple A and so it's like that, like, triple A and double A and triple 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 A it's very exciting, but I'm just wondering how you are going to start off with uh, Ivan first and how do you help the local companies because money is always an issue with some reason. You want to not go forward. I don't know what they want to achieve either. You want to buy, 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 so how do you afford all the schools that go forward? So maybe you give some advice to the young people about how they start off with Ivan and how they service. 
Okay, so for funding, all right. So as you guys can tell, building a game is not easy. Okay, so if you can see, I can code like uh, the six hours of a product. That is just a proof of concept level. It's not maturing into a real product. It's just a proof of concept. It works. Uh, it's playable, but then again, it's not ready for markets. Okay, so for a ready market uh, product, it takes hours. It takes months. It takes years. To develop like uh, Faris uh, presented, okay. So uh, for uh, I mean for for how we sustain is basically we don't do just games. So for Kukut we do a lot of things, uh, mostly IT related. We are software house, so building a game it takes like six to eight months, but building a website is just take a day or a week. <laughs> so you could you imagine building a website? You don't have to spend on uh, visual artists, uh, 3D renderer, uh, more 3D. More, you don't have to spend even for music, uh, if just licensing and also programmer. Okay. So in order for us to sustain, we go into like a software developments. Uh, for starters, we, uh, we don't uh, actually start with a game development. We actually start with a few people that have various of skill. Uh, there's a few founders uh, that are uh, expert in making mobile apps. A few founders are expert in making a system web, web page, and a few of us are making games. So we collaborate together. It's not just a one person, a one man show. It's a teamwork actually. So we sustain each other to build a company. Uh, all right. So uh, in order for for us to uh, sustain in game industry as well. We don't usually make a lot of products. We only go for products that have uh, definite terms of uh, uh, return of investment, something like that. Okay, so as you can see, uh, Didi and Friend, Omahana, this is really high, high traffic IPs. Uh, this is favorable for kids, local. Okay, so we, when we build game for them, we already expected a projection to certain type of incomes for ads, for licensing, uh, for any ambassador. So we already strategized this in terms of the business. So it's not just a game development, but we need to think of the markets itself. So this game, uh, this game can generate money in terms of what? Uh, have you guys heard about uh, digital advertising? Okay, all you can see on billboards and everything. And what if I can tell you, you can uh, promote anything. Let's say uh, Tudung. Uh, Kropo, Krepe, whatever it is, you can promote inside games. Have you guys seen it? Yes, if you play mobile games, you can always come up with a pop-up with any kind of ads, right? So that is actually targeted. 
Okay, so that is also a source of revenue. Uh, like, uh, sorry, Rafi, uh, Rafi. So he gained in uh, some income from the ads itself. So for us, ads is just one of the source of income. But there's a other business opportunity that we can gain income from, uh, from licensing, from even collaborations. We're making for e-learning with DDM Fair. We approach certain private schools or anything, so we can sell it. Uh, so in order to sustain, yes, uh, you need to dive deeper into the business sections. Uh, but for us, uh, we are doing multiple things. It's not just game, but uh, it's also a, a software house, uh, website, uh, system, mobile apps. Uh, and for game ourselves, we're not just making a product, casual game or anything. We're making a product for client to achieve their objective. Uh, something like I show you the, the automotive side. So I'm making a game for car inspections. So the carbon monoxide inspection, how many uh, intensity, the light intensity. So that is how we overcome uh, and achieve some objective. We are making games, but achievable in the client's objective. Uh, so this, uh, this is also a project. Uh, okay, All right, go for it. I mean, like, you know, it's not one of It is a big project. I think it's a, uh, it, it does require a lot of investments, a lot of PCD, and then uh, a lot of, uh, you know, figuring out what kind of project you want to work with. But I, I would like to also um, give it as, uh, I mean, like, I, would, I would like to uh, uh, okay, uh, to, to more like a, a smaller scale, uh, right? Uh, because I know most of you guys here probably. Some of you guys have an idea to start your own game of life. Uh, maybe some of you guys have, you know, uh, want to start with friends. So even if you are looking alone in your house, um, with your own project, you are actually, uh, you, you still need a budget, uh, you, you still need to pay yourself. What is the minimum amount of uh, whatever cost that you need for the week? That is your cost. It, that is your own project. But once you start you know, working with other people, working with friends, you're working with team, then you have to consider your other people's livelihood as well. So those are the things that you have to take into consideration. So there's a lot of ways that you can do, like plans, uh, you know, do other you know, projects, or, um, you know, a bit, or, or pitch for your project to, to other investors. But one thing that uh, we also need to consider is that if it's your first game, it's most probably going to fail. And don't expect, like, okay, I have. 30,000 ringgit after 30,000 ringgit, I'm like, go, oh, right? And then this 30,000 is uh, what I'm putting my, my revenue on. It's not going to have the most of the time. So you have to consider that your first project is something that you learn along the way. Um, so you have to, to consider that as well. So you have to think, okay, you, you don't think like this one project is like do or die, right? It's, it's, it's most of it not going to work. So uh, whatever you are planning, uh, do plan ahead as well after like, this whatever project that you have. Uh, to tell you, okay. <laughs> okay. But, 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 yes. Yes. Okay. Untuk lima tahun yang lepas, uh, untuk survive, uh, so already saya ada satu passive income daripada ads. Okay, second adalah consultant dan trainings. I saya memang ajarlah orang buat game semua so yang ketiga adalah paid saya ada game yang berbayar okay. in a purchase okay. yang keempat saya ada kerja saya sendiri lah saya ada oh lagi okay. saya ada kerja saya sendiri saya saya kerja dengan orang kan saya buat apps dengan webs so yang kelima saya boleh buat apps sebenarnya saya boleh buat apps dan saya boleh buat website sama saya pun uh, sama dengan company dia buat So saya boleh buat app, uh, website. So any website memang saya boleh buat. So tengok pada banyak projek yang saya dapat, saya akan manage lah. Contoh kalau saya tak ada projek, saya akan buat games. Okay, sebab tu setahun saya buat dua games. Kalau pasal lah, dua setahun dua game, dua games. So sebab saya mahir dalam bidang games. So tak tak tak, tak ambil waffle, tak ambil masa yang banyak tau. Maksudnya satu game tu sebenarnya satu bulan saja. Okey, sebab saya punya target adalah a uh, game yang simple. Saya tak buat macam heavy macam Toda eh, macam ni kan. Saya buat just simple sebab saya rasa orang main game card phone dia nak benda yang simple saja. 
So make everything simple. The video, skim trailer, apa kan? Semua ah minimalis. So benda semua simple. Okay, itu ada, uh, itulah strategi saya untuk maintain uh, 5 tahun yang lepas. So lima benda ni adalah source income saya lah uh, sebagai indie. Kalau uh, untuk kalau saya dah dapat satu juta database tu mungkin saya akan buka studio saya sendiri dan benda yang lima tu akan saya pass kat saya punya staff lah betul tu. Okay, alright. Ah, question, questions. Di soalan nak soalan. Hello. Okay. Uh, basically, I have no skills or any form of, of a training in computer science or programming. However, I have my bachelor's degree in English, specifically in creative writing and storytelling. I even used to work for eGames Global, which died a long time ago, as a game administrator. My question is, if a person like me who has Am I reverberating or something? Anyway, if we, a person with, like, with my set of skills, is it possible to participate in any company that does game developing? That's my question. Thank you. So what you're saying, your skills are language, right? Skills Storytelling, is it? I've got my bachelor's degree in English, uh, specifically creative writing and storytelling. Oh, okay. But I have no skills in computer science or programming. Is it possible for someone like me to participate in the world of game developing? So I can answer that. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, so in, in game development, especially in the video games, right, uh, depending on the products that you do, is it a story heavy? Is it a gameplay heavy? Um, even if it's a gameplay heavy, there is some story that you do that you need, uh, you know, uh, you need to, to to figure out like. How do you convey the message to the audience, right? Depending on what your audience uh, you are targeting. So in game development, we definitely need uh, a writer, someone that can write in game as well as outside of the game. So we also need people that can do marketing because whatever games that you are making, if it's not marketed, then you won't have people playing it, right? So it's either in game. Um, or uh, even for like marketing publishing, we definitely need a lot of uh, you know, creative writing, a lot of storytelling, and 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 so on. True. Okay. To add on, uh, yes. Uh, basically, when you go into creative industry, it's not just games. If you go for uh, animation, comics, uh, games, all this is required some storytelling to it. Okay. So what makes an a game interesting is actually the storytelling the draft itself i mean before we making a game we need to uh, to make a storyboard right so uh, to make a storyboard of course a uh, skill like yourself is really important okay so let's say uh, i play a uh, prince of persia game i don't know uh, now how many version uh, prince of persia each prince of persia have their own storyline okay so even including uh, assassin creed or anything right so there's a lot of storytelling in each of the games Okay, so your skill is highly much appreciated in the game industry. And of course, it's just not limited into the game itself. You can go for animation company as well. Uh, my side point is to uh, build a body of work first. For example, if you're looking at, let's say, uh, Marion Studios, recently released, the, they're looking for RPG designers, so everyone went wild to wild. Uh, so if you're targeting a specific company, Understand what kind of products they make, uh, then do a create a body of work that will fulfill that criteria. So, for example, if like I said, RPG Home Studio, right, uh, does a lot of uh, uh, taking a lot of writing in progress. So, build some content, like for example, product where you can see the amount of research they did into the whole <laughs> Sankara background, all that, right? If you can if you ensure that you, you can do some research, you count the stories like that, right? And then you submit your, your your portfolio basically and your body of work to them, there's a higher chance you can 
really important. Uh, but typically, writing roles are more contractual. I, 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 it may or may not take more than a full time thing, right? But that's the nature of the industry. Yeah. yeah so, if you, so, whatever skill you have, whether it's in uh, some people, you know, I don't know, accountants who just want to join a games company, you can find a games company, <laughs> sure. and accountant. So, any skill that anyone has, you can just join to any company. The game industry is multifaceted. Story writers, press, press writers, you know, audio engineers, composed uh, people who produce music, musicians, all. There's no space in this space for everyone. So I think try your luck. Sometimes you go to a website, you don't put a job there, it's mainly because they didn't hire someone when someone manage your website. But companies are always looking for talent. Right? So even if they're not hiring, send your resume, send your portfolio, they might keep it on the database. And when they do need someone who has writing skills, for example, they will reach out to you. Any other questions from the audience? Well, there's right, right, right behind me. Uh, how do you... Um differentiate between um, developing for a local market versus an international market? And what kind of challenges do you uh, differentiate between those? Uh, all right. So in general, when you develop a game, when you publish it in the game store, most of the time you're targeting local market because there's no, there's very little barrier when you publish games. So uh, most of the time the game will be available Worldwide, unless you specifically want to develop the game and you publish it just in the country, so um, in general, I would say whenever you want to develop, uh, first of all, you figure out your target market, right? Um, and most of the time, your target market may be a, 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 a worldwide group, right? Uh, but if, for example, you are looking to target a certain uh, you know, demographics population. Uh, but, uh, maybe like in case of the content wise, it's like uh, only for Malay people or, or only for like you know certain religion, for example. Uh, then um, whatever design that you make, you have to make sure you have the audience uh, in mind. Um, so it's not it's not that complicated uh, to develop a product, uh, different kind of uh, you know target market. It's just that you need to know what your target market is. So the problem is that sometimes people develop. Um, a game or a product, uh, you know, that has like a mismatch with their whatever target market is, and that creates problem, right? Uh, so every every design that you make, make sure that you consider who you want to sell to or your audience is. Ditto, basically. All right. So same uh, as for my previous product. Yes, uh, we try to know the target market, target audience. All right. So if I'm making a game for kids, three to seven, I, I could assume that uh, any kind of nation is using it uh, depending on the, the subject matters. Okay. So for us, uh, making e-learning games. Okay. So that is based on the curriculum standard for Malaysians. Also, so that is considered as a local product. But if I'm making, a, let's say, a casual games, uh, this can be used worldwide. And usually when we post into store, we, de we deploy it into a global market. Yes, we try to make a localization to the games. I mean, in terms of the languages, so they can toggle any kind of languages they would prefer. And if the game have a voiceover, uh, so we need to re-record in, uh, in other language. For nowadays cases, it's become easier because the, in the help of artificial intelligence, AI, you can convert any kind of uh, languages that you need. Uh, so it's much easier to capture a global market for it. So I don't show it well, but uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, for my product, I don't show it well, but uh, in terms of some of the product is actually white label and also PNC. So that's why I didn't put on my slide. Uh, so for Rafi, yes. Yes. Uh, Yes. Uh, untuk lima tahun yang lepas, saya target uh, 
Malaysian so game saya semua dalam bahasa Melayu okay dan I'm not sure why people outside install because uh, Google Play Google Play Store store yes <laughs> no uh, the store when you search SEO uh, macam mana cakap benda tu worldwide dia auto so maksudnya kalau you publish game any games in Play Store dia akan memang satu dunia kita boleh set ke mana saja maksudnya you boleh set India okay all all countries okay so uh, untuk dapatkan the best SEO tak tak SEO tak apa search engine optimization so when you search Google uh, contoh you search uh, you nak play game tekan tiki ya you search make sure your games is top So bila top untuk dapatkan top 10 in Play Store you kena dapatkan download yang banyak. So dia akan top chart. When top chart a uh, teka-teki tu top chart tu dia akan akan orang akan lebih yakin. So ada juga cara untuk dapatkan top chart adalah dengan menggunakan paid. Kalau ada bajet sikit dalam bidang marketing eh dalam marketing you bayar you akan dapat top chart so you you type search yang itu pentingnya uh, SEO so you type teka dia akan dapat nombor satu tapi yang pertama adalah paid so, cuba buka sekarang mesti ada paid you tekan, tekan je apa-apa yang you rasa you nak main games contoh you nak main game teka teki kan you type teka teki apa yang atas tu kadang dia akan keluarkan paid so second tu bukan paid So saya punya game kebanyakan top 10. That's why dia reach dalam sebulan tu 10,000 senang sebab yang penting adalah nama. So apa-apa you buat uh, games nama jangan too complex. Ah uh, terlampau terlampau apa? Complicated. Melainkan IP. Yang ada IP sendiri macam Bidi and Friends yang dah terkenal. Okey. Uh, itu, itu pandangan saya lah Tapi bergantung pada a uh, macam saya cakap tadi, uh, apa yang uh, yang you rasa you nak daripada game you Okay, apa yang uh, Sebenarnya game ni terlalu besar tau, dia macam buat movie So, you target siapa yang nak tengok movie you So, you, you kena fikir benda tu So, you tak boleh dapat kolam yang besar So, dapat kolam kecil pun dah kira okay Maksudnya, target market tu So, apa-apa business Saya, saya cakap, tapi business eh Uh, dalam in term of business, games ni adalah products so convert that product into game, uh, money ok, itu yang penting okay. uh, jangan tamak nak semua satu lautan tu just apa yang you nak makan saja. ok faham tak? <laughs> faham tak? siapa yang ada business mind, dia akan faham benda ni ok, alright Uh, okay, marketing. Uh, marketing adalah benda yang agak besar sebenarnya. Uh, cost development jangan terlalu besar, tapi marketing kena besar. It, itu paling penting. Okay, dalam buat games, uh, bukan buat games lah, dalam bidang sama juga buat movie. Kalau you buat movie hebat mana pun, tapi orang tak kenal, orang tak tengok, you you rugi betul. So, kena fikir uh, lebih sikit lah. Okay. Sebab tu saya pergi seorang sebab saya sekarang ni saya bekerja dalam bidang uh, sorry saya bekerja dalam uh, apa ni digital marketing so saya, sekarang ni saya dalam dalam pembelajaran macam mana marketing tu bergerak so uh, benda tu semua dah macam mana saya dah tahu buat produk tapi saya tak tahu macam mana nak pasarkan so saya kerja dengan uh, company digital marketing so dua benda tu dah connect sekarang so saya dah nampak benda tu Okey. Uh, itu pandangan saya lah. Uh, pengalaman saya bekerja dengan bukan bidang games dan IT. So saya berani masuk ke bidang tu untuk saya nak tahu macam mana saya nak marketkan ke international macam tadi. Okey. Oh, Okey. Faham? Okay, any last questions? Last question, there's something, yeah. Two questions up there, there's something behind, and the person can go ahead, ask a question, you can, 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 you
All right, thank you. Uh, hi, speaking of marketing, because I myself own a digital marketing agency. And that's why I wonder, so usually how much um, budget do you allocate into your marketing? Like speaking percentage wise, uh, like if you get a million fund, like percentage wise, how much uh, are you going to allocate it into your marketing? Okay. Um, so depending on how big the company is and where you are right now, like what your goal with your product is, uh, it's a very uh, it is quite a tough uh, question to answer. Yeah. But I can say that definitely will have to be more than your production cost. Uh. Um, so usually, like one of the way that you can do is that, for example, you are developing a product. Uh, this is of course if you are targeting a more mass market, uh, right? Uh, for example, you develop a product uh, with hundred thousand GD as uh, your production value, then you double that amount for your market. Uh, but not all of the, you know, not everyone can do that. Yeah. So um, depends on your budget or what you want to do. But sometimes, uh, you know, you can also go the pathways where you try to avoid paying for anything. So if you do try to like print up a uh, more social media kind of thing, and then you can save a lot of money. But especially for mobile game development, um, it will be tougher to get, uh, especially if you are going into uh, the genre that is um, well established, you know, have giants in there, a lot of big companies in there, big games in there. Uh, it, 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 is, it, it comes to a point where um, if you're not throwing enough money, your, your game will be, you know, uh, uh, yeah, disappear uh, in the market, right? So uh, generally, definitely um, more than your production. Marketing. All right. So a certain budget to it. Uh, basically, same like Faris. Uh, we don't actually locate an exact budget to it, but we try to minimize as much as we can, basically. All right. So for us, uh, let's say a product with DDM friends. So it's a joint venture pro products. Okay, so they are in animation industries, so we are in the gaming industries. Okay, so it's wise to split it like a half half 50 50. So, in terms of the marketing itself, uh, DDM Friend and Extro has much more exposure on marketing. I mean, they can channel it into their TVs, uh, yeah, the advertising and everything. So, it's much more leave it, leave it to them. So, for us, our expertise into the game. We try to make the game as much as uh, good as it can be. The same goes to the restaurant. If let's say restaurant, uh, they make uh, let's say they they make marketing spending about half million. If the food is not, I mean the food is not nice, it's not good. People no don't go into the, the the restaurant itself, right? So for game, same goes to games. The game must be intriguing, must be good. Playable, no bugs and everything. It give up a re really seamless experience. Good for the kids, good for the parents and everything. So that is our part, making it well for the end users. Uh, so for them, they are focusing much on marketing, how to capture the audience worldwide or even locally. All right. So for our own product, yes, we try to approach uh, any kind of agency that would give us a grant in terms of marketing. All right, so let's say one of our product is Play at Classroom. We managed to secure a grant, uh, 250000 for uh, marketing, so post-processing. So we have to pitch to the MDEC. So actually, that is MDEC grant, DCG, Digital Content Grant for Marketing. So we have to pitch the game really well. We engage with uh, Asiata Telcom. We already engage with parents, with schools and everything. So we have to present a portfolio really well so that they grant us a budget to it. So with that budget, we spend on uh, mascot, costume, flyers, banners and everything. Digital uh, marketing included, uh, Zooms and everything, uh, so the, the free gifts and everything. All right. So it's really up to how the strategy goes. But in terms of the portion, there's no definite portion how much budget is needed to spend on it. Okay. Uh, untuk budget marketing, ya. Kalau macam saya, Indy, saya memang bergantung kepada free marketing seperti TikTok. Uh, TikTok, okay. You must 
buat apa setiap produk mesti ada dia punya uh, free media sosial lah untuk 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 apa orang kenal kita lah so macam saya memang tak ada ada bajet tapi saya gunakan uh, untuk yang berkualiti punya Uh, game saya. So macam contoh game saya ni satu game yang dia tak datangkan duit. So saya takkan marketingkan dia. Melainkan saya dah ada fun tak? game tu bila saya publish, make sure dia return balik duit saya. So game yang mesti uh, dalam game kita boleh dapat duit daripada satu ads, passive, second uh, in-app purchase, yang ketiga adalah yang macam jenis uh, physical product when you download tu kena pakai that board games, board games contohnya ok macam tadi guna AR kan, AR so dia jual flashcard ok yang itu saya rasa perlu kalau saya kalau saya lah kalau, sebelum saya jual, eh sebelum saya spend marketing saya kena ada benda tu dulu so bila saya dah market kan so dia akan return balik so ROI eh, ok ROI adalah penting ok uh, macam saya budget untuk develop games saya rasa tak banyak ok, tapi saya memang tengah mencari dana, mungkin saya akan minta ok, mungkin saya akan pitch ke MDEC untuk apa marketingnya, tapi sebelum saya push kau-kau marketing uh, saya make sure that games memang akan return balik lah ok ok, faham, ok ok, good ok so, uh, MDEC is a marketing point of 3,000 ringgit Testing. Thank you everyone. Thank you speakers. Thank you Mr. Tilai for the engaging question and answer session. Um, I would like to welcome Mr. Dillon, Frederick Kugan from Exola Kirin Academy for coming here and spending time with us. I just wanted to acknowledge your presence here with us today. And now, before we adjourn, I would like to invite Professor Technologist Dr. Salwani binti Muhammad Daud to present our speakers with token of appreciation. I also would like to invite Mr. Dillon to be on the stage with us. Yeah, please. The seat is yours. The last seat is yours, actually. I know you guys are hungry already. Please give us more. Five more minutes, okay? I promise, I promise. All right. So we have Mr. Yi Ivan, head of incubation at MDEC. Next. We have Mr. Rafik, indie game developer. Next would be Dr. Johanita, our senior lecturer at Unimai. And then? It's okay. And then Mr. Yi Ivan from MDEC. 
And last but not least, Mr. Faris from Todak Studio, Sendrian Berhan. Next, it would be a photograph session. Uh, first, first session is in front here. Yeah. Okay, next uh, session will be on the floor along with the guests for today. That will be our last agenda. Thank you so much for our speakers, Professor Dr. Sawani, Dr. Joanita, Mr. Tilai, Mr. Faris, Mr. Rafiq, and Mr. Farid. Thank you so much. I would like to invite all of our guests to stand up for a photography session. If possible, please fill up uh, to the front seat for those who are in the back. All right, smile. On the screen. Thank you so much, everyone, and hope to see you in our next future event. Feel free to join or visit our website for future events. On the screen is our upcoming event called Fast Track Skills Acquisition. If you guys would like to see and meet Mr. Rajasingam again, feel free to register to the QR code in front. Thank you. Once again, signing off, Najwa from Unimai. Kacau. Aku nak makan. Yes. Yeah.